Championship football greetings from Mansion Park in Altoona. Tonight, the District 6 Class A football championship, the Penns Manor Comets, and the Northern Cambria Colts. Good evening, everybody, from Altoona with Paul Tatarko and Jake Slobotnik will be alongside two down at field level. I'm Mark Burdick as we bring you tonight's championship game on Cat Country 106.3 and on Renda Digital TV. And for the first time ever, Paul Tatarko, it'll be two Heritage Conference teams in the District 6 Championship. That just shows you how strong that conference is. It really does. Yes. I mean, and not to Very mention strong. a team that won here last night uh, that's not even that beloved here in their own hometown. <laughs> Bishop Guilfoyle Marauders, they moved up to double A. They're still doing damage. They defeated Penns Valley last night 56 to 35 to claim the double A championship. Nobody in Northern Cambria and Penns Manor shedding any tears for the Marauders' departure out of Class A. Absolutely not, I'm sure. <laughs> well, it's a great honor to be here. You know, these teams, they, there's not a lot of history here, Paul. It's just the second appearance for both teams. The Penns Manor Comets will look for their second championship in as uh, many appearances. You have to go back to 2011, the Danny Farrens led Comets. And for Northern Cambria, they've only been here once. They're still looking for their first District 6 title. They've been involved in a lot of district championships, just not in football. A couple and a few, quite a few in volleyball, and I think you have to go clean back to 1965 Class B state basketball champions. Yep, that's, I'm going to kill a microphone. We're getting a lot of music from the outside speakers. So uh, the winner of this game, we already know th that uh, they will play the Canton Warriors. They're 11-1. and one. Just the way the bracket worked out across the Commonwealth, Canton won the District Six or District Four championship last week, 42 to seven over the Muncie Indians. They get the benefit of sitting this week. They might be sitting right here at Mansion Park Stadium watching this game. Well, they get the benefit of sitting, but the winner of this game, they have to travel 185 miles to play their next game. So they're sitting a week, but that's a long travel to play the winner of this game. That's exactly right, Paul, because District 6 will have the benefit, the champion, of hosting the quarterfinal round in Class A in the state playoffs. This is technically a state playoff game as well as being a District 6 championship. So Canton will have to make that long trip uh, from the southwest corner of Bradford County. You read my notes, didn't you? <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Let's talk about the uh, Colts' second appearance in a District 6 championship game. Colts appeared in 2003. Their head coach, Sam Schutte, was just a young pup. He's still young. Everybody's young compared to me. But he was the junior high coach. I was just going to say, he was coaching the junior high team. <laughs> they lost uh, to a very good Bishop Carroll team, 49-14. to As for Penn's Manor, it's been 11 years, but it was a successful trip 11 years ago. Absolutely. They had a really strong team that year. And I believe that um, you were talking about Danny Ferns. He was only a junior back then. Um, they had another really good running back, uh, Voda Pivik, mm -hmm. who was a senior that ran a lot from the fullback spot. We'll talk about that game as our pregame show goes on. We welcome you to our first National Bank pregame show from Mansion Park in Altoona. First National Bank with branches in Clymer and Northern Cambria. Happy to be bringing you tonight's championship pregame show. You know, weather's going to be a factor here tonight. It's been cold all week. It will be no exception tonight. And we actually are going to spend a little bit of time on the weather. We have AccuWeather meteorologist Jeff Nordeen. And let's see if John, our video producer next door, is ready to pull up that feature. And this is AccuWeather meteorologist Jeff. As for the weather conditions, we'll give them to you. And also Jake Slobotnik down on the field will give us the current conditions down on the field. But let's see what AccuWeather meteorologist Jeff Nordeen says we can expect for tonight right now on Renda Digital TV and the Renda Media Football Network. This is AccuWeather meteorologist Jeff Nordine here on Cat Country 106.3 and Renda right. Digital TV with your game day forecast for the PIAA District 6 Championship at nice. Mansion Park Stadium in Altoona. After the quite the windy and snowy day yesterday due to the cold front pushing through, we're expecting the game day forecast to be cloudy for a majority of the day, dry though with no snow expected and the winds will be a factor as well, not to mention it will be cold. High temperature for the day, 33 in the afternoon while closer to game time, it'll be around 30 at 5 to 6 p.m. when fans start to arrive. AccuWeather Rio field temps at that time around 19 degrees. 
Speaking of the winds, once again, will it be breezy at kickoff and during the game out of the west-southwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour, occasionally gusting up to 25. Kickoff for the game with Penn's Manor Comets taking on Northern Cambria Colts is at 7 p.m., and Thames at that time will have gone down to 28 with a real feel of 20. As the championship comes to a close around 9.30 or so, fans and players leave with Thames nearly the same, 27 degrees and a real feel of 16 above. I'm meteorologist Jeff Nordine reporting for Cat Country 106.3 and Renda Digital TV. All right. Going to be cold for those players, Paul. You know what? That The pigskin's going to be hard to handle, too. That that ball, that football gets cold, and it, it's hard to hold on to. And hits are harder. Yeah, and it feels a lot harder. And, <laughs> and the turf, too. <laughs> well, let's see how it feels right now, for real. And the real field temperature with our own Jake Slobotnik. He's down on the field, and he can give you the current conditions and an update as the two, these two championship teams get ready to go at it. The Penns Manor Comets and Northern Cambria Colts. Jake. Thanks so much, guys. Down here on the field, well, Mr. Nordine did not like. Right now, 28 degrees. Clear skies, however, not much wind going on. A real feel of about 21 with the windshield. Uh, winds blowing northeast at 6 miles per hour right now, according to AccuWeather. So, yeah, it's going to be a pretty tough night down here for the players and myself included. But thankfully, as I said before, we, were, we went on the air. Five players will do that to you. We'll see how I feel in the third quarter. Jake, now, new turf too, right? That's right. I was just getting to that. You talked about the hits being harder, the pigskin being a little harder tonight. Uh, the turf is no exception tonight. But the good thing for these players, this is pretty new turf. Back on April 19, 2021, the Altoona School Board voted to approve renovations to Mansion Park. Those renovations did include re a brand new turf down here on the field, as well as resurfacing the track and to my right here, a scoreboard, a brand new scoreboard, all digitized. Uh, that was all part of the plans. The original turf was laid down in 20, er, 2009, but it's really common practice to see turf relayed after 10 years or so. You see that more or less on the collegiate and professional levels, but now it's sort of adapting into the high school level and maybe before you know it, the middle school and elementary school levels as well. The uh, renovations are meant for a really Altoona football, but as you can tell tonight, there's a lot of PIAA District 6 action going on here with the football. They also host soccer championships. They actually once held lacrosse championships down here. And really, this is also meant for community events as well. They hold the Relay for Life down here among other community events. So relaying the turf definitely needed for this uh, Mansion Park field, this beautiful stadium. And the, the players, while it's going to be definitely harder to fall on tonight, it's definitely a lot softer. Guys, that's what it's like down here at the, on the uh, field level. Hopefully it's warmer back up there in the booth. It definitely is. It's about 72 degrees, isn't it, it's, Paul? It's Tatarko. pretty comfortable. I'm ready to shed this jacket. <laughs> We're coming back with more on our first National Bank pregame show. We'll set the stage a little bit more when we come back. We're going to look at both teams' regular season and how things unfolded. That and more as our first National Bank championship pregame show continues from Mansion Park in Altoona right after this on the Renda Media Football Network. Involved in a collision or accident? Call the Collision Repair Specialist, Petroff's A1 Auto Body. A family-owned business since 1946, Petroff's A1 Auto Body has been bringing you the best customer service in the area. Petroff's A1 Auto Body is committed to providing quality services and going above and beyond to ensure their customers are completely satisfied. Call Petroff's A1 Auto Body and Climber, the Collision Repair Specialist, at 724-254-9417. Hey guys, if you're in need of a trim or a new look and don't have the time to make an appointment, stop into Mariah's Barbershop in Spangler. Mariah gets you in and out quickly and offers affordable options like $12 regular haircuts or $15 bald fades. Straight razor shaves also available. And if you're looking for that perfect stocking stuffer for the holiday season, Mariah has gift certificates available in store. After all, there's nothing better than giving the gift of a fresh look to someone you care about. That's Mariah's Barbershop, 710 19th Street in Spangler, walk-ins and cash only. Robindale Energy Services is a proud supporter of high school athletics and our hometown community. To do its part for the local rural areas, Robindale Energy has been cleaning up refuse coal piles that dot the western Pennsylvania landscape. These waste piles, remnants from past decades of mining in the region, are removed and used to create affordable energy for America. Robindale Energy has helped to clean up hundreds of miles of streams and channels. In the area where the land has been restored for a while, streams have become alive again and able to support plant and fish life. For employment opportunities, contact Robindale Energy at 814-446-6700, extension 120. 
Good luck, Colts! From Lynn Sinoco of Northern Cambria, servicing your auto mechanical needs with expert care. Lynn Sinoco has a long list of satisfied customers. Also in Northern Cambria, Medvan Transport, providing non-emergency transports for wheelchair and station car transports for all your medical transport needs. Medvan Transport is now hiring drivers and EMTs. We are West Central Equipment, Pennsylvania's largest family-owned John Deere dealer. From farming equipment to riding lawnmowers to our new addition of compact construction equipment, we pride ourselves on working with those who work with the land. And the Slazak family has been serving Western PA through four generations since 1938. We have locations in Butler, New Alexandria, Somerset, Evansburg, and Martinsburg. Visit us online at westcentraleq.com. Luxembourg's Jewelers, a proud supporter of all the area athletes, would like to wish the best of luck to all the Heritage Conference schools and, of course, the Indiana Little Indians this season. With two convenient locations, Luxembourg's Jewelers is the winning choice for gifts of any occasion. Show your school pride with gifts ranging from beautifully logoed coffee mugs, keychains, money clips, water bottles, and more. From the Indiana Mall to downtown Indiana, Kip, Jeff, and the Luxembourg's team wishes everyone an MVP season. Luxembourg's Jewelers is Indiana's Jeweler. You can find just about any kind of home online. Starter, fixer-upper, or your dream home. Now, finding the right mortgage is just as easy. With the FMBE Store, you can explore loan options and get a great rate. Add to cart, then check out. Online or in person. From clicks to bricks, we've got you covered. Experience the FMBE Store in branch, online, or on your phone today. Tonight's District 6 Class A Championship game, we welcome you to the first National Bank pregame show. From Clicks to Bricks, they have you covered. Experience the FNBE store in Branch. Branch is in Clymer, Northern Cambria, or the nearest branch near you, online or on your phone today on the FNBE store. Paul, these two teams, Northern Cambria 9-3, and three. Penn's Manor, they've owned the number one seed basically throughout the regular season. They come in to tonight's action at 11 and 1. As for the road to Mansion Park, Penn's Manor with back-to-back -back identical victories, 21 to 7 over the Glendale Vikings in round one, and then last week against the Portage Mustangs in the District 6 semifinals, both games at Pat Corrigan Field. You were at both of them, and they played well enough. Yes, yes. Um, they didn't play their best ball they played all year. I've seen them, I think now this will be the sixth time. But they played, like you said, they played well enough to win the ball game. That's all that matters this time of year. Win to move on. As for the Northern Cambria Colts, a surprisingly easy time with Cambria Heights shutting them out last weekend in a game that our own Jake Slobotnik called 41 to nothing. I think that raised some eyebrows. The Colts advanced to the semifinals after defeating Moshannon Belly 34 to 20. Uh, with both games played at Duffy Doherty Stadium, and they are playing really well. They are pretty healthy, too. They're playing their best ball at this, this time of year. The, the first time they play, played Penn's Manor, they had a couple injuries that hurt them bad. Uh, they jumped out to an early lead, but Penn's Manor ran, ran the ball very effectively. Coming to throw the ball, that's a different story. Well, John's going on the Renda Digital TV side. And by the way, if you'd like to watch tonight's game, just look for the link at wccsradio.com or any of the Renda Media websites. You can find the link to watch tonight's championship game. You can also go to YouTube and just search for Renda Digital TV, and you'll find the game link. And we're also uh, wanting to know if you're watching the game or listening on Cat Country 106.3 or on the Trib Live Sports Network, email us in the booth. Uh, we'd like to hear from you. It's great to hear from different parts of the country it was, it was or around neat. the world, yeah. yep. for that matter. And it's d6championship at gmail.com. That's d6championship at gmail.com. You know, a lot of times when you're doing these championship games, you look to see if there's any common opponents. Well, this year... There are a lot of common opponents. We're going to bring them up on the Renda Digital TV side and just go through the schedule for both teams. As we look at the screen, uh, both teams beat Purchase Line, Penn's Manor 32 to nothing, Northern Cambria 33 to 6, United Valley easy time for the Comets as they started out with back-to-back -back shutouts, and Northern Cambria struggled with them. 
at uh, Thomas Medill Field. It was just a 20 to 13 score. Marion Center, Northern Cambria shut them out 30 to nothing deep into the season. Marion Center improved and gave Penn's Manor a little bit of a test, 36 to 22. Up front, Marion, Marion Center controlled the line of scrimmage for a good bit of that game. Here's a difference, Homer Center, Week three, Penn's Manor defeated the Wildcats 26 to six. And then uh, week four with the Wildcats, or actually it was week five, the Wildcats went to Northern Cambria and knocked them off 13 to seven. Although in fairness to the Colts, they committed one penalty after another. Yeah, I think they had 13 penalties in that game, if I'm not mistaken. River Valley, it was 33-21 for Northern Cambria, 43-14, no problem for the Comets. West Shimokin, goose egg again for the Comets, one of three shutouts during the regular season, 40 to nothing, whereas uh, Northern Cambria had to struggle a little bit, 35 to 26. Well, that's the game the young Schwartz boy ran, I think, for 355 yards or whatever he ran for. <coughs> Cambria Highlander. Heights Highlanders, we mentioned last week, it was 41 to nothing in the playoffs. That was a bookend because they started the season, Northern Cambria did in Cole Bowl 1.0. 35 to 28, and I think that game was a springboard for Northern Cambria. Paul gave them belief right out a of the game. A lot gates. of confidence it gave them, yeah. A rivalry game like that, when you re win at the start of the year, yes. Cambria Heights and Penn's Manor, 43 to 22, and that was a game that Heights suffered some injuries that uh, they were actually controlling that game early. Yeah, they were up 14 nothing. Cambria Heights was in that game. <clears throat> and then Portage, another common opponent, Penn's Manor beat them twice, including in the playoffs last week, 21 to seven regular season, 55 to 28 at Portage Stadium, and it was 33-21 Northern Cambria losing to Portage at Portage Stadium. Yeah, and their big fullback ran for a lot of yards in that game also. Head-to-head -head competition, all Comets, 40 to 14. September 30th uh, during the, the regular season, but I think we're expecting a tighter game here tonight. Absolutely. All right, we're going to come back with more on our first National Bank pregame show from Mansion Park in Altoona. Going to hear from both coaches. Sam Schutte up first, the head coach of the Northern Cambria Colts in his sixth season, 35-29 and 29 record. He's 3-3 three and three against the Comets all-time, and we'll follow that up with Bill Packer in his 18th season, Paul, tonight, Coach Packer will coach his 200th career game as the head coach, and what a job he's done. That's a great commitment from the entire Pack Packer family to Penns Manor High School. 125 and 74 is overall record, 629 winning percentage. We'll look a little bit deeper into that if we have time on our pregame show. He's 13 and 6 against uh, the Northern Cambria Colts, 1 0 in the playoffs. Yes, they did play in 2011 when Penns Manor had that sensational team. What's ironic is they played the week before that in, in the regular finale. season final, and then they beat them again the next week, I think 16-0 in, in the first round of the playoffs. You are exactly right. First National Bank pregame show will continue after this with Northern Cambria Colts head coach Sam Schutte. That and more as we roll on District 6 championship coverage from Mansion Park in Altoona on the Renda Media Football Network. Hello, this is John Lefthal, owner and director of the John A. Lefthal Funeral Home, wishing our Penns Manor Comets much success in the upcoming playoffs. It's always an awesome feeling to achieve success, be it in business or sports. You as players have made our community proud. To be a winner, it takes much dedication, time, and preparation. Give it 100% years from now, you will look back with fond memories of what you have accomplished. Go get them, Comets. We at the Lefthal Funeral Home are behind you 100% game plans, how important they are in the world of sports, coming up with the right strategy to ensure success. Who's on your team to help you reach your goals in life and protect your assets? John Nelson of Nelson Insurance can develop the right insurance game plan for you. Nelson Insurance is an independent agent representing Erie Insurance and other fine companies. Call Nelson Insurance for a review of your financial game plan. Nelson Insurance, Franklin Street Climber, 724-254-9276. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. 
Dixonville Moose on Route 403 Highway North between Clymer and Dixonville is a strong supporter of local youth, high school student athletes and organizations and is proud to be a sponsor of tonight's big matchup. The Moose Lodge is currently in a membership campaign until the end of November. All military veterans who apply for a new membership will receive their second year's dues for free. For more information on events, check them out on Facebook or go to beamoose.org. The Dixonville Moose, voted 2022 Best Bar or Pub. The team at Smith Colon Oil knows how hard work and dedication pay off. Tonight's athletes and coaches have done their communities proud, and Smith Colon Oil is pleased to be a sponsor of this great matchup. Good luck to all the athletes tonight and the rest of the season. Speaking of seasons, the weather is turning cooler. Need coal, heating oil, or propane? Give the team at Smith a call, and don't let fall and winter catch you by surprise. Smith Colon Oil in Northern Cambria, 814-948-4708. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. Right now at Luther Ford, order your new Ford and lock in 2.9% APR financing for 60 months, no matter when your new vehicle comes in. That's right, order your new vehicle now, and your interest rate is locked in even if rates go up. Just stop in today and drive away in your new vehicle from Luther Ford. Luther Ford, two great locations, Homer City and Evansburg. Click on LutherFord.com. Our District 6 Championship kickoff show from Mansion Park in El Tuna continues with Northern Cambria head coach Sam Schutte, powered by First National Bank, proud to serve the Northern Cambria and Penns Manor School Districts. Coach, first of all, congratulations. How good does it feel to be returning to a District 6 Championship game for the first time since 2003 when you were just a young junior high coach, right? It feels great. That's what you work for is to be in this moment right now. And um, it's just all the hard work pays off and you tell the kids this is why you do it. And it's just one of those moments. You know, the strength of the Heritage Conference too. Bill Packer mentioned to me with Bishop Guilfoyle out of the equation and playing up where they should have been all along. Uh, it's kind of nice that you have a lot of public schools. You had a Heritage Conference Final Four. Uh, and that meant we were going to have a Heritage Conference championship, and I think it speaks to the strength of the conference. It does, and, you know, when you do your pregame uh, or your preseason voting and things of that nature and you, you try to pick who's going to win, you really can't pick who's going to win. I mean, it's solid from top down, and, um, you know, this year just proved that, having four in the final final four and, uh, you know, two in the, in the final district competition here. So it's just a uh, testament to the strength of schedule that we have and the Heritage Conference and putting together teams, and I think it's only going to get better as years to come. You know, it's amazing what small school sports, I think football in particular, can do to bond a community. So much excitement. I know a big send-off for your team to come over to Northern, or I mean to Mansion Park in Altoona with the fire department and people lining the streets. It's exciting and something kids will look back on. It is, and you tell the season, you tell our guys, it told them at the beginning of the year, it's, it's, you know, we had a bonfire to kick off our season, and it's, our season could have been like the fire, and it, it actually did turn out that way. It starts with a small few, which is our team and our, our, our nucleus, and, and as the season got on and as we started picking up momentum, it started growing in the community and more and more, and, and today coming through town and having the fire trucks escort us out, and uh, I, I swear we have fire trucks every home game, but not like we've seen today. It, it was an, a true district-wide um, you know, just support, and it was just awesome. And that's that's what this this that's what this sport brings to communities. You started the season with a bonfire. You also started the season with a season opening victory over the Cambria Heights Highlanders, and you had to get the past them. We called it Cold Bowl Two uh, a second time to advance to the championship game here tonight, and you did it in resounding fashion, forty-one to nothing. I mean, your guys were clicking on all cylinders, both sides of the ball. It was just a true team effort. It was a game plan that we put together, um, you know, and, and coaches put together game plans, and, and we put a game plan thinking, you know, we, we could be successful. We can be successful, but never in our wildest imaginations that we would execute the way we did and perform the way we did. And just, like I said, it, it, was, it was a true team contribution and a true team victory. Was there a point in this season, Sam, that you thought, hmm. I know coaches don't think this way, but, hey, we're pretty good. We got a shot. Well, I didn't want to think ahead, but I, I, I said at a pep rally last week when we had one, you know, you can feel it in the air with this team. And, um, you know, back in 2003, you can feel it then. And back at when we had, um, you know, Ben Vazel and, and Logan Onks and those guys, that, that was a good team too. And you can just feel the energy with those types of teams. And I, I actually could have felt that. Didn't want to think ahead, and I never said it to the guys until last week that, you know, they had that sort of potential. And if we could have 
lived up to our potential and we can play to our potential, big things could happen. And, and here we are, and we just hope that we can continue this against a very tough Penns Manor team. You know, I think every season there's a crossroads, too. I came out to your stadium week five, I believe it was, and Homer Center kind of had dug themselves a hole. You were undefeated, and they upended you 13-7, uh, to 7, although a lot of penalties helped them out, but credit Homer Center, and then the next week you go out to Penn's Manor and they handle you pretty good. All of a sudden, two losses in a row, you're four and two, and I think that's where the crossroads come in. Your kids had a chance to go two different directions, and they took the path uh, that you wanted them to take. Absolutely, and I, I, I told them from the beginning, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not about um, the sprinting of a race. It's not about the the short term goal it's the long term goal and we're in our long term goal right now before the season started we did these this whole week of just you know agonizing um punishing workouts and it's for this it's for the season the season is a long season and it's not about week five or week three it's about week 10 or week 11 week 12 and i think we just kind of condition that in our guys minds that we're not done. You know, we're not even close to being done. And, and I think that's, that's been received and it's been, it's been shown that our guys aren't going to quit. Even tonight, if we get down, um, we're not quitting. And if we're up, we're not quitting. It's just going to be a total team effort, four quarters, all season long as it has been. 40 to 14, the first meeting, you had some things go against you. Pick six, one of them, what has to be different tonight? Well, first and foremost, we got to minimize, we got to minimize penalties. We can't have penalties and we can't turn the ball over. Take advantage of their mistakes, and again, we we gotta we gotta move the ball um, offensively. We gotta get a run game going, and we gotta slow their run game down. You haven't been in the playoffs since 2019, so for these kids, the majority of them, if not all of them, this is all new. How important is a good start tonight? Well, I, I think I, I I think it's any a good start in any game is important, whether it's playoffs or regular season. We just gotta we just gotta be true to who we are. We got we can't can't be. Um, letting Penn's Manor dictate the the tempo of the game and the and controlling the game with what they do offensively or defensively. We just have to do what we do, stay together, and just be okay with three, four, five yard gains, and be okay with stopping them for two, three yard gains. I asked Coach Packer this. I guess you had the benefit all week long of these miserable weather conditions. Hopefully, it can stay dry here tonight. But the cold temperatures will be something that. What do you do to prepare for that? Well. <laughs> It was Tuesday. We're uh, we're at practice in the snow in a snowstorm down at our place, and we start running, con doing conditioning, and doing doing those sorts of conditioning drills. And our guys are like, "Well, we heat acclimation, we got a cold acclimation, so we cold acclimation this week." All right. Finally, give me one thing that has to happen other than the obvious taking care of the ball and penalties uh, for you to walk away with the District Six title tonight. We got to play with heart, plain and simple. Well said. Sam, thanks for doing this. You've done a heck of a job. Proud of you. Looking forward to calling the game tonight. Should be a lot of fun. Thanks. Sam Schutte, head coach of the Northern Cambria Colts in his seventh season. And, yep, all the way back to 2003, the last time the Colts were in a District 6 championship. This guy, he still looks young to me. Everybody does nowadays. And he was even younger as a junior high coach. We'll see how he does as the head coach of the Colts tonight as they play in their second ever District 6 championship game, looking to come away with the big trophy. For First National Bank with head coach Sam Schutte, our pregame show, our kickoff show for Mansion Park continues on the Renda Media Football Network. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Just like the Penns Manor offensive line provides great protection for the running backs, Gillen's Gun Shop on Airport Road in Indiana can help you with a wide selection of firearms for your family's protection. Gillen's also specializes in firearms and ammunition for sports shooting hobbies, hunting needs, and gun bash products. Gillen's would like to wish the Comets the best of luck the rest of the season and let Brighton know how proud they are of him. Keep up the great work, Comets, from the team at Gillen's Gun Shop on Airport Road. The Rose of Sharon Floral Shop in Clymer is a proud supporter of Penn's Manor High School. Located in the heart of Clymer, they've been providing beautifully designed floral arrangements specializing in birthdays, anniversaries, get well, funerals, weddings, homecomings, and proms for over 30 years. 
The Rose of Sharon Floral Shop is the trusted name for all your floral needs. Call 724-254-4234 or visit our website at roseofsharonclimber.net. Go Comets! We are West Central Equipment, Pennsylvania's largest family-owned John Deere dealer. From farming equipment to riding lawnmowers to our new addition of compact construction equipment, we pride ourselves on working with those who work with the land. And the Slazak family has been serving Western PA through four generations since 1938. We have locations in Butler, New Alexandria, Somerset, Evansburg, and Martinsburg. Visit us online at westcentraleq.com. Welcome back to Mansion Park in Altoona as our District 6 Championship kickoff show continues with Penn's Manor head coach, Bill Packer. And coach, hard to believe it's been 11 years since you've been in this position to claim a district championship. The years go by, but talk about your feelings. Yeah, it goes by fast. It doesn't seem that long ago to me, but uh, everything's going fast here. And uh, I guess that's the older you get, that's the way it is. So, uh, uh you know, it's nice to get back to this game. Uh, I know the community and the fans and and the players were all excited before about going to this game. They had a nice send off and everything, and they worked hard. We had a great group there with Danny Ferens and them. But uh, this group has uh, accomplished the same thing. They've worked so hard, and they're they're just so excited to get back to this game. Thursday night dinner at Luigi's send off today. You know, the fire departments are involved. It, it's special, and the kids deserve it, and I'm sure they enjoy it, and they'll enjoy it more when they look back on it several years down the road. Yeah, that's a big key to it. You know, uh, today is very exciting. It's an exciting day for the kids, uh, getting a send-off that they had. And uh, uh, like you said, the fire trucks and everything, the community out there, uh, that that's real nice. And, uh, again, like you said, in a few years from now, back, you know, back when they're – older they, they bring these things back up and they talk about this well you know when you're older and you've been coaching for 18 years now you may not be uh, aware of this but tonight is your 200th game as the head coach of the Penns Manor Comets I'm sure you're keeping tallies back at home <laughs> that that's news to me there Mark because uh, I didn't really know that but I guess that's shown my age a little bit so uh, uh, you know hopefully we can come out with a successful 200 uh, game here and come out with a win. Coach, let me ask you this, because I don't even know the, the story before we talk about the Northern Cambria Colts. Most fans maybe don't know what inspired you nearly two decades ago to want to apply and take over the program because it had, it had been struggling. Yeah, you know, being an alumni from here and playing at the school, uh, I just uh, – seeing year in and year out I mean the big losses and I mean getting blown out all the time I mean I mean I can remember the Blairsville game the year before we got beat 55 nothing and uh, just seeing that you know I just felt bad uh, I know that we've had some great athletes coming through and uh, I was just uh, wanting to try to do something about it and uh, try to get a nice coaching staff behind me and and uh, it's become successful it sure has. You've built something, uh, uh, your own legacy for sure, and many of those coaches, relatives included, have been with you uh, most of the way. First two rounds of the playoffs, identical 21-7 to victories right over the Glendale Vikings and then in a rematch last week over the Portage uh, Mustangs. Tonight, another rematch with Northern Cambria. Talk about the challenge in front of you. Well, it's a big one for sure. Uh, they're playing much better than they were playing earlier in the year. Uh, to me, they're more balanced uh, team than what they were uh, when we played them earlier in the year. Uh, their running game has really picked up, and uh, the Booker kid not only throws the ball well, he's starting to run the ball a lot now too. And uh, he has some nice backs. They have a nice size line up front. But not only that, he throws the ball so well, and, and he has the receivers in Myers and uh, the dumb kid. Delansky and the big tight end Janosko, uh, you know he has a lot of weapons and they can catch the ball. The Myers kid's fast. Uh, he's going to be a hard kid to uh, cover. And uh, like I said, there's so many weapons you you can't like put your focus just on one guy. Last weekend was a, a Heritage Conference Final Four, so we knew it was going to be a 
uh, excuse me, Heritage Conference Championship night. Talk about that and the strength of the conference this year. Oh, you know, it's nice to see that, uh, you know, that we've had the Heritage Conference in this, uh, you know, we've been in the top eight. How many we have there, six or so? I mean, it's been great. And uh, it's, you know, I can say one thing. It's nice to have the bishops out of here. So uh, there's no doubt about that. Richland might not feel the same way. <laughs> right. But, uh, uh, you know, just the conference was so good this year that, like I said right from the beginning, anybody can beat anybody on a given night. And if you're not prepared and ready to go, uh, it's going to happen. Defensively, you've talked about uh, you know, some of their skilled people with uh, Booker's thrown for over 2,000 yards. But defensively, they've been ball hawks, too. Maybe it's a good thing that you don't throw a lot because they have 22 interceptions as a team. They've been very opportunistic. They're a plus 18 in the giveaway takeaway department. So, as always, taking care of the football will be key tonight. Yeah, we think that's going to be a big key. Uh, turnovers are a big part of the game, and uh, they are ball hawks. Uh, we saw them against Portage there a couple weeks ago. Uh, man, just making some nice picks, and every film that we've had, we, we see that happening. And uh, uh, that's going to be a big part of the game. And the penalties, which, boy, that's been a bugger for us uh, for the last few years, but uh, we just got to eliminate that, and we have to play disciplined football and get good field position, and and uh, just hopefully we can control the ball a bit, keep them off the field, and uh, you know put a drive on and finish our drives like we like we did last week, especially that last one, putting it on for eight minutes and putting it in. Finally, Bill. I guess maybe the fortunate part is it's not going to hit you out of the blue because you had to prepare in it all week long, but it's going to be extremely cold. Kickoff temperature is going to be in the 20s at, at best. Can you prepare for that? Uh, you know, we've tried to prepare all week. It was cold all week and, uh, uh, you know, snow-covered field and everything. But, uh, uh, it, you know, there that's going to be a big key to it. Uh, turnovers there again. Are you going to be able to handle the ball? keep control of the ball, uh, you know, uh, that's going to be a big key. Uh, hopefully we prepared well enough in the cold and uh, that we're going to be ready, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Coach, thanks for doing this. Always a pleasure seeing you. I hope number 200 in your career is a special night. Thanks a lot, Mark. Head coach Bill Packer of the Penns Manor Comets, and we're going to come back to Mansion Park in Altoona for more of our District 6 Championship kickoff show it's the Comets and the Colts right here on the Renda Media Football Network. Tulick Valley Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning wishes the Comets all the best in tonight's game. Tulick Valley Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning congratulates the coaches and players for all their hard work and dedication and for all the excitement these high school athletes bring to the community. And for fast, reliable, and professional plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service, call Two Lake Valley Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning in Alberta or online at twolakevalleyplumbingandheating.com. The Climber Slovak Club is a proud supporter of Penn's Manor Athletics and wishes the Comets the best of luck in the playoffs. The Slovak Club opens seven days a week with daily specials, including Tuesday Pasta Night, Taco Wednesdays, Thursday is their famous wing night, and Friday is Peel and Eat Shrimp. Reminder, November 23rd, All You Can Eat Taco Bar, and December 10th is the Members Christmas Party. Bar Bingo every Sunday starting at 6, 100% payout. The club is always accepting new members and is now in a membership special. So just stop on by and join the best club in the area. Way to go, Comets. This is Jerry Roof from McCabe Roof Funeral Home in Climber wishing the Penns Manor Comets the very best of luck against the Northern Cambria Colts in the District 6 Championship. You have worked hard all season, which have brought you to this exciting game. To both teams, congratulations on your amazing season. You are a true example of what hard work and dedication can produce. Best of luck, Comets, from your friends at McCabe Roof Funeral Home in Climber. There are lots of choices in life. No matter what you're told, when you're hurt and need physical therapy, you have a choice. Smart people choose Mahoning Physical Therapy. Mahoning Physical Therapy has been serving the region since 1989 with experienced therapists, knowledgeable in orthopedic and lymphedema rehabilitation, and aquatic therapy. 
Mahoning is Medicare certified with convenient offices in Clymer and Marion Center. That's a lot of reasons to choose Mahoning Physical Therapy, accepting all major insurances. National Bank pregame show, and we are getting closer. Both teams are back in their respective locker rooms. We just heard from Bill Packer, head coach of the Comets. We talked about Coach Packer and his 18th season. The Packer playoff record is pretty good, Paul, because in his 18th season, this is the 15th time they've been in the playoffs since 2005. Granted, he would admit there were a couple of years when they were taking 12 teams, which I always hated, way too many. Glad this year it was eight that maybe they didn't belong in the playoffs, but the fact is they were just playing by the rules. He's 12-14 and 14 all time in the District 6 playoffs, and no game bigger then November 26th of 2011 when they took down the Bellwood Andes Blue Devils by a count of 40-14. to 14. Danny Ferens kind of got the team off on the right foot, didn't he? He was pretty darn good, that's for sure. The young man's getting married here coming up pretty soon, too. Yeah, he had uh, 201 yard rushing in that game. I think he had a couple TDs and only, on only 18 carries. And he scored on the first play from scrimmage on a 91 yard run. You mentioned Joey uh, Botapivic from that team. He had a big game that night. 17 rushes for 141 yards and two touchdowns also led the Comets with 14 tackles defensively. He was their leading tackler that year. <clears throat> yep, he was a good ball player. We yes. go back to September 30th, first meeting between these two teams. Penn's Manor, they were so uh, stout defensively, particularly early on in the season. They held the Colts to 153 yards of offense on their way to a 40-14 to victory. And after the Colts had tied the game on a 65-yard touchdown pass from Owen Booker to uh, Peyton Myers, Comet scored three unanswered touchdowns before the half took a commanding 27-7 lead and never looked back. Yeah, <clears throat> I got to see that game, Mark. And, and again, I, I, I hate to say injuries may not play a player in that, but Northern had two of the better ball players out. In a small school, single A, you know, you hear that saying by the professional coaches, next man up. It's tough at that level. You know, you only have 30 to 35 right. kids out. Um, you're not a private school where you can pick from, choose from each one to, you know, to another. Um, so that might have played a part, but we'll see tonight. Let's take a look at the comparisons. We'll take a look at the team stats first. And if you're watching tonight's game, you'll see this on your screen. And records, we talked about it. Penn's Manor 11-1. Northern Cambria 9 and 3. Penn's Manor averaging 32 and a half points per game. You're going to notice a lot of these stats are very similar. Northern Cambria right behind them at 29.8. Defensively, Penn's Manor a little bit better, 13.8 points per game. Northern Cambria allowing 18 and a half points per game. Total offense, look at that, Paul. Almost Three, identical. 352 for the Comets, 348 for the Colts. And total defense, 198 allowed per game for the Comets, and uh, 50 yards more to be exact, uh, 248 for the Northern Cambria Colts. And, you know, a big part of this game, the two quarterbacks, and we're going to have contrasting styles. Let's take a look at Max Hill and also Owen Booker of the Northern Cambria Colts. On the ground and through the air, right? Yeah, I mean, Owen can really throw the ball. Northern's had a history of that, going back to Ricky Arley, uh, Mikey Hoover. Uh, there's been a, a few quarterbacks at Northern that could really throw the ball. Max more in running a quarterback, but he can throw it too. If given the opportunity, he can throw the ball. Max Hill, 209 rushes, 1,522 yards on the ground, 7.3 average, 27 touchdowns. By the way, in 2011, the sensational Danny Ferens, who broke about every record imaginable, he had wide and district wide 27 <laughs> touchdowns. Yes, yeah, set even identical. He had his in 14 games, I believe, and Max is in 12 right now, going to his 13th. Owen Booker. 140 for 228 yards passing, uh, 228 attempts, I should say, 61% uh, completion percentage, 2,032 yards passing, 20 touchdowns, and he has some good weapons led by Peyton Myers, Paul. Yeah, Peyton has really, really good speed, Mark. He, uh, he's only a junior, I believe. I have to look my notes here again, but uh, he has some good speed. He gets up the seam really quickly, and that's where Penn's Manor is vulnerable, is up the seam in the field, and it showed on the very first play, the first time they put, played each other, right up the seam, went for a touchdown. 57 receptions, 982 yards. We're going to go with our uh, Luther Ford Lincoln keys to the game. 
and we'll be checking in with Jake Slobotnik down on the field because he covered the Northern Cambria Colts quarterfinal and semi-final matchup. You have seen the Comets. Three keys if the Comets want to hoist their second District 6 championship. Um, ball control. You want to keep the ball out of the hands of the quarterback from uh, Northern. Um, don't turn it over. And penalties, Mark. Penalties have hurt Penn's manner, but not bad enough. They bailed themselves out. they got to avoid the penalties. All right, let's go down to the field and bring in Jake Slobotnik, who covered the Northern Cambria Colts the last couple of weeks. What are keys if the Northern Cambria Colts, Jake, want to raise their first District 6 championship trophy? Well, if the Colts want to win, one thing they got to do, guys, is stampede that offensive line. You talk about the total defensive yards they've given up, and obviously a little lopsided uh, Northern Cambria giving up a little bit more. So if they can penetrate that offensive line for Penn's Manor early on and get through and apply pressure to Max Hill and his uh, Treat his crew in the backfield. It'll be good for Northern Cambria. You also want to see that connection for Booker to Myers light up because, as always, you want to roll with your one-two punch and make that battery work, especially in high leverage situations like this one. And if we can, I'm going to share one of Paul's here. Limit the penalties. Penalties have killed them all season long, as well as any other team. So if they can limit them and limit their mistakes and force Penn's Manor to commit some penalties and turnovers, it'll be a good game for the Colts. Hey, don't forget if you're. Thank you, Jake, for the. Keys to the game brought to you by Luther Ford Lincoln Route 119 in Homer City. If you'd like to watch tonight's game, just search for us on YouTube, search Renda Digital TV, or visit any of our websites, including WCCSRadio.com, and look for the Renda Digital TV link. And no matter where you're watching or listening, we'd like to hear from you. You can email us in our broadcast booth at d6championship at gmail.com. Just give us your first name and where you might be listening. We'll send out a, a shout-out if we can. Again, d6championship at gmail.com. Coming back with the starting lineups when our first National Bank pregame show continues from Mansion Park on the Renda Media Football Network. Good luck to the Comets and the Colts in the District 6 Championship game from your hometown team at Freedom Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Northern Cambria. Winter is coming and the incredible tire sale is on at Freedom. Buy three tires and get the fourth for $1. Stop or call Freedom about the most trusted tire brands available. All buy three, get the fourth for a buck. Offer valid now through November 30th, but don't wait. Nobody does tires and service like Freedom in Northern Cambria. Call Freedom Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram at their lucky number, 814-948-7777. Sleppy Chiropractic Family Wellness Center would like to take the opportunity to welcome Dr. Evan Ludwig to her family. Dr. Ludwig is a graduate of Northern Cambria High School and a 2021 graduate of New York Chiropractic College. Sleppy Chiropractic offers services in chiropractic care, sports injuries, disc injuries, orthotic casting, decompression, robotic cold laser therapy, and a complete line of nutritional products. Call 724-357-9030 or visit Sleppy.net. Proud supporter of Heritage Conference Athletics. Hi, this is George Tate of Tate Supermarket and Climber, established in 1906. And ever since, it's been our family's mission to be the best community grocery store that we can be. It's been so gratifying that the people of Indiana County have voted Tate Supermarket as the best grocer in Indiana County. We are so grateful and have always strived to live up to our motto that the most important item in our store has always been you, the customer. Thanks again from Tate Supermarket in Clymer, Pennsylvania. Robindale Energy Services is a proud supporter of high school athletics and our hometown community. To do its part for the local rural areas, Robindale Energy has been cleaning up refuse coal piles that dot the western Pennsylvania landscape. These waste piles, remnants from past decades of mining in the region, are removed and used to create affordable energy for America. Robindale Energy has helped to clean up hundreds of miles of streams and channels. In the area where the land has been restored for a while, streams have become alive again and able to support plant and fish life. For employment opportunities, contact Robindale Energy at 814-446-6700, extension 120. Gaston Services of Nicktown would like to congratulate both the Colts and the Comets on a successful season. Gaston Services has been serving Cambria and Indiana counties for over 25 years with services including parking lot maintenance, repair and line painting, lawn mowing, landscape services, general hauling, and large tree trimming. Also remember to call Gaston Services for snow removal. It's coming. Online, visit gaston-services.com. Come have fun with the Cherry Hill Township Volunteer Fire Company. 
Get it on the calendar now. Bingo every Wednesday and Saturday at 645. Come have some laughs at the Comedy Night, December 9th. And of course, Breakfast with Santa in December. Keep listening for details or check them out online at cht240.com. The Cherry Hill Township Volunteer Fire Company. Protecting, investing in, and supporting their community. Including supporting the students at the Penns Manor School District. Go Comets! give you the starting lineups. We'll be getting down to Jake for the coin toss as well as they blast the music here. Paul, you want to give the Northern Cambria Colts starting offense, averaging 29.8 points per game. Well, I'm not sure I can pronounce all these names, Mark. <laughs> Zembros. Uh, Zembros, a left tackle, number 55, senior 6'2", 235. Left guard is Austin Hamsdale. A junior, 5'10", 115. At center, I'm sorry, 215. At center, number 56, Braden Palace. A junior, 5'10", 190. At right guard, and this guy, can, this guy's a good player defensively also, Dawson Shooty. He is 6'1", 255. At right tackle, Ben Messina, junior, 6'1", 200 pounds. As we mentioned, a quarterback, um, Booger. He's 5'9", 190 senior. Colton Peronish is a one running back. Senior, 6'185". And you'll also see um, Jack Shreddy carry the ball. He's a junior, 5'7", 165. At wide receiver, Ty Dumb, 5'11", 145 sophomore. Alexander Delansky, 6'167", senior. Um, and we mentioned Peyton Myers, and I apologize, Peyton, you are a senior, 5'9", 165, and we want to say a happy birthday to you, young man, 18 years old today. All right, for the Penns Manor Comets, I'll give it to you. Left tackle will be Peyton Costco, a junior 5'10", 222. At left guard will be Brighton Gillen, a junior 6'165". Center will be Nate Raphael, a senior 5'10", 270. Right guard, Alex Polenik, a sophomore 6'2", 210. Right tackle, Big Jacob Tate, a junior 6'4", 303. Quarterback, Max Hill, senior 6'1", 195. He's rushed for 1,522 yards, 36 of 85 through the air with four interceptions, just a 42% completion percentage, 553 yards passing, but he has completed uh, passes for eight touchdowns. Fullback will be Mark Bagley, a senior, 5'10", 185. He's rushed for 362. The wings, Ashton Corvina, a 5'10", senior, 170, 103 yards rushing for 758 yards and six touchdowns. And Justin Marshall, 94 rushes, 732 yards and six touchdowns. The receivers, Carter Smith, tight end, junior, 6'1", 188. And Adam Altimus will get time as a receiver, a 5'10", 155-pound senior. You'll also see Eric Baum at a receiver. Penn's Manor offense averaging... 32 and a half points per game, 352 yards per game uh, of offense, as we talked about earlier on our first National Bank pregame show, 304 of that 352 on the ground. Northern Cambria, Paul, a little bit more balanced, 348 yards per game, 175 rushing, 173 passing. You can't, well, I guess you could, 174 apiece, but you can't get much more even than nope, that. Pretty even, and they're plus 18 in uh, turnover ratio also. Yeah, they are ball hawks. 23 interceptions as a team, and uh, plus 18, as you mentioned. Their secondary safety dumb leads them with six interceptions. Cornerback Peyton Myers, five interceptions, including a 101-yard pick six last week uh, against Cambria Heights in that 41 to nothing victory. And Caleb Dolney also with four interceptions. We're going to have the coin toss momentarily, and then we'll get ready for the start of tonight's game. Jake Slobotnik down on the field. Jake, now that the music is done blasting away, 
we have the crowd mic outside of our uh, press box window, and there's a lot of excitement, isn't there? How's the, how's the crowd? Looks pretty good across the way for Northern Cambria. Well, if you look at the bleachers firsthand, you might think, ah, oh, pretty thin crowd on both ends. But as I look around the outside of the fence here, there's still a lot of people standing looking to get a really close look at tonight's game. So I would rather say that this is right down the middle, 50-50. Both teams traveled very well, and rightfully so. They're about 15 minutes apart, so I don't see why they wouldn't be able to travel well. And considering the conditions of tonight's weather, I'm very shocked at how many people did come out, but it shows the pride of the communities that both of these teams possess. Obviously, Northern Cambria, a very small town in Northern, well, obviously, Northern Cambria, PA. Uh, Penn's Manor out of Climber, also another small town. This is pretty big for them, so they're getting as much community support as possible. It's good to see both teams traveling well tonight. I'm very impressed with both sides. This facility, by the way, Jake, holds 10,400 seats as Jake will make his way out with the officials to mid, uh, midfield. And um, it's a big facility, Paul. They've uh, had a lot of championship games here and uh, bleacher seats for over 10,000. Quad captains for the Penns Manor Comets, Max Hill, along with Ashton Corvina, Justin Marshall, and Nate Raphael. And for the Comets, it is Owen Booker, along with Logan Dumb, and Ben Janosko. Jake, down to you. As we will have the instructions. All right, from gentlemen, the anything changed since we were out here? Everybody remember what happened? Northern Cambria won the toss. They elected to defer. Penns Manor, you guys are going to receive to start the first half, and you elected to kick away from the board, correct? All right, one second here. We'll get things going. Northern Cambria, Northern Cambria has won the toss and elected to defer. All right, the Northern Cambria, you go over there. Penns Manor, come over here with me. We don't have to go too far right here. It's good, guys. Penns Manor will receive this direction to start the game. Let's shake hands one more time, gentlemen. Good luck and have fun. Well, guys, there you have it. Northern Cambria defers. Penns Manor will start tonight's District 6 championship with the Rock. All right, Jake, thank you very much. And that's the first National Bank pregame show from Clicks to Bricks. They have you covered. Experience the FNB e-store in branches in Climber, Northern Cambria, or the nearest FNB branch near you. Online or on your phone today, the FNB e-store. The opening kickoff, the Comets will receive the kickoff from the Northern Cambria Colts. When we return, it's time to play some championship football for Mansion Park right here on the Renda Media Football. Business happens here. And here. And here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, Meet them face to face and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. In Altoona, I'd like to acknowledge our studio engineer back at Camp Country 106.3, Lucas Lane. Lucas, good to be working for you uh, with you for the first time. Our video producer, John Smathers, in the booth to our left. Our statistician is in the house, Jerry Rossi. Jerry, wave good uh, hello to everybody. We'll wave goodbye a little bit later. Our video operators, camera operators tonight, Joe Weister. He worked the Wonderful Life Holiday Parade. And Joe, you're right back with us. Thank you so much. Along with Peyton Trollinger from IUP. I had the ride up with Joe and Peyton. Outstanding to talk to them. Peyton, a sophomore at IUP, has done a lot of video work and play-by-play. -play. He'll call uh, the football game against Ashland University next Saturday. Paul, he's a Charleroi grad. Fantastic. One thing I noticed different here, we only have six officials. Oh, never mind. We have seven now. <laughs> Trey Pershing, short end over end kick. It's taken at about the 36 or 37 yard line. And with the football for the uh, Penns Manor Comets, it was Troy Williams, just a little pooch kick. Yeah, I don't know if they were they did that on purpose, Mark, or, or not. I, I just don't think they wanted to kick it deep to all that speed. So the Comets will have it at their own 38-yard line. There, if uh, you're listening tonight, their home uniforms. Navy blue pants and jerseys, and Max Hill on the keeper, and Max over the 40, up to about the 42-yard line for the 
Northern Cambria Colts making that tackle, Ben Messina for the uh, Colts. Or Janosko it is being credited. Janosko, 99 tackles, second on the team, five sacks. He has an interception and a pick six to his credit. Second down and five for the Comets. Ball in the right hash, motion man, and they give it to him, and that is Ashton Corbina to the edge, and I think he got the lead chain. He's forced out of bounds in the Northern Cambria Colts bench up around midfield. I apologize, Mark, I'm having trouble seeing Northern's numbers on their jersey. Well, we'll see here on the replay monitor maybe who made that tackle. Corbina on the carry. As a sweeper on the right side, they blocked that so well. Uh, yeah, I, I believe it was um, Zemros. Ball at the 49 of the Comets. Wide side receiver to the left boundary. If you're watching at the bottom of your screen is Carter Smith. And Max Hill hands it off, dancing around and not going anywhere. Going to lose some yardage. I think that's Marshall with the football this time. On the tackle for the Colts, Cody Dump. Cody Dump leads them with 161 tackles, including 20 TFLs. That's a tackle for a loss. Yeah, he was in the backfield quickly there, Mark, from his linebacker position. They, they run blitz is what uh, Northern's doing right now. They lose a yard back to the 48-yard line. They send Corvina in motion, and Max Hill boots to his right. Looking, dumps it off, and it's deflected away. Incomplete, almost intercepted. Or was that? No, it was incomplete, right, Paul? Yeah, it just went off the tips of his fingers. Number 24, I believe, might have tipped it. For it was intended for Corvina. Corvina. Yeah. And yeah, that was a little right. RPO there run by Penn's man. I think uh, Max had the option whether to uh, tuck it and run or dump it off. Ty Dumb broke that up. Third down and 11, football at the 48-yard line, right on the El Tuna logo at midfield. Empty backfield, and Hill looking, going to tuck it away, comes near sideline, tries to get to the edge, he does to the 45, upended at the 40, but he's going to have enough for a first down. On the tackle, Peyton Myers came up from his right cornerback position, but the speedy Max Hill adds to that rushing total. And a new set of downs at the 39-yard line of the Colts. Yeah, that's one thing with Max. You have to contain him. You can't let him get to the edge. He's just so fast. Very cool night here. Real field temperature down around 20 degrees. First down and 10 from the 39. And Hill gives to Corvina. Cuts it up. Now back outside. Zigs and zags. Fights off a tackle. Gets to the 37-yard line. Making the tackle, Ty Dumb from his safety position. Yeah, uh, good by, uh, move by Austin there to avoid two tackles at the line of scrimmage and get up the field. Big third down conversion for the Comets to keep this drive alive. Pensmer is a little late getting a play call onto the field there, Mark. We'll see if uh, there's only about 10 seconds left on the clock. Three minutes gone, nine to play here in this scoreless first quarter, opening possession of the game. Max Hill gives on a jet sweep, Justin Marshall to the 35, to the sideline, to the 30, and forced out of bounds, making the tackle for the Northern Cambria Colts, Colton Peronish, but they're gonna move the chains again. Jake Slobotnik, our sideline reporter, and Jake Pensmanner that on those jet sweeps, they just block it so well. It's been such a trademark of their offense. Absolutely, and what the best thing, best part about it is they also have this whole committee of runners that can make any of these jet sweeps possible, and then Max Hill, if he's got no available round, he just takes it himself. This ground game is something else for Penn's Manor. Hill sets Corvina in motion, and he fakes it to him. He keeps it on the RPO. Short gain that time inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. We'll call it a gain of three. Ben Janosko, I believe. Janosko, those two. The linebackers for both teams are so active. Cody Dumb, 161 tackles. Janosko with 99, the number one and two tacklers. And for Penn's Manor, it's Carter Smith 
and a mean leave. I mean, you, all, you expect your linebackers to be in on a lot of tackles, and these two teams, the numbers don't lie. That's a credit up front for taking up blockers from both defensive lines. Again, Corvina in motion, and they hand it to him. He cuts it up, but he's dragged down from behind nicely by... They're hard to see those I numbers. I think that is uh, Shooty actually. Yeah. Dawson Shooty, the nose guard, slid across, fought off the block. We'll get a replay here in our broadcast booth on the Renda Digital TV side. And an outstanding job by Shooty. Looked like Penn's Manor pulled, but nobody got a finger on Shooty. So it'll be it's third down, call it seven. I'm looking here. This is where in the right hash mark they like to roll Max this way, give him the option to throw it or run it. Um, if you're Northern, you've got to contain the edge. Wings both ways. Fullback is Bagley, and they give on an inside reverse, and Shooty blows it up. Dawson Shooty, and he had some help from the Ty Dumb. Actually, Alexander Dolonsky. Oh, yep. So they lose yardage back to the 25-yard line. It'll be fourth down and eight, but it was Shooty, who is a handful, a 6'1", 255-pound junior. Yeah, they're having trouble blocking him on the right side, Todd. Mark. Oh, I'm sorry. That was five weeks in a row working with Todd. I apologize. Fourth down and eight. That's okay. Todd Marino covered a lot of the Comets. And Hill, booting to his left, looking, throwing against the green, and it's incomplete. Carter Smith, ball thrown low, couldn't handle it at the 12-yard line. Not sure he'd have had the first down, and the Northern Cambria Colts hold off the Penns Manor Comets, and they'll take over. Big stand by Northern Cambria there, Mark. That's huge to come away with that. So the football is marked at the 25-yard line, 6.47 to play here in the first quarter, first possession of the game for the Colts. <laughs> Offense, as I mentioned, really balanced, 175 yards rushing, 173 yards passing, 348 yards overall. Nobody in the middle of the field for Penn's Manor, Mark. Owen Booker from the gun, hands it off to Delansky and not a lot Going on for Delansky, they're going to stop him, maybe with forward progress, a one-yard gain. We will see. Stacked up by the inside of that line, Nick Raphael and others. No gain. Andrew Delansky on the carry, no gain. I think Adam was in, uh, the middle and lead was in on that tackle too. You're going to have a tough time running against Penn's Manor. Motion man and from the gun, it is is the quarterback Booker. Booker dancing around, dumps it off out in the flat but to Peyton Myers. Myers can't get loose. Max Hill had him and he shed that tackle but he's still going to lose a couple yards back to the 23 yard line. I mean Lee but once again Eric, is that Baum? Yep, that yep. was in there and it will be third down and 12. I thought for a moment that Myers short hopped that football. Good. I thought so too. I thought it might have skipped, but that's good pursuit to the ball by Penn's Manor. That's for sure. It's third down and a dozen. The wide side of the field toward the Northern Cambria bench. Twins up top, twins down below. Motion man Myers and Booker gonna keep it as they spread the field and Penn's Manor's not fooled. He'll gain three or four yards outside over the 24 or 25 yard line. And he kept churning there, Mark. He might have got up to the 29. Yeah, over the 25, I should say, up to about the 29 yard line, but well shy, about six yards shy of the first down. So the Colts go three and out on to punt. Long snapper is Owen Booker, the punter, Ben Janosko. This will be his 30th punt of the season. He averages 33.8 per punt. Back deep for the Comets is Ashton Corvina. It's a little change up from what we've seen in the past. Max is usually back there. Snap floats back from Booker. Janosko gets the punt away and it's away from uh, Corvina. Takes a big hop. He picks it up on a couple of hops at the 35 to the 40. 45 yard line as a flag flies. Probably going to have a penalty marked off against Penn's Manor, and we also have a media timeout coming up. We'll unsort the penalty as we go to break. 434 remaining in the first quarter on an IRMC playoff sports night on Cat Country 106.3 and Renda Digital TV. We are scoreless back after this on the Renda Media Football Network. Yeah, that was a hold for sure. 
For over 50 years, Diamond Drug Store and Diamond Medical Supply have helped the people of Indiana to live a most wonderful life. From the advice and expertise of our trusted pharmacists and respiratory therapists to the friendly and personal service of our store staff, we've worked hard to make our community healthier and happier. As Indiana kicks off the holiday season, we can't help but feel grateful to serve this very special community and continue to call it home. From all of us at Diamond, we'd like to wish you a very happy and most importantly, a very healthy holiday season. Business happens here and here and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. Hey guys, if you're in need of a trim or a new look and don't have the time to make an appointment, stop into Mariah's Barbershop in Spangler. Mariah gets you in and out quickly and offers affordable options like $12 regular haircuts or $15 bald fades. Straight razor shaves also available. And if you're looking for that perfect stocking stuffer for the holiday season, Mariah has gift certificates available in store. After all, there's nothing gift of a fresh look to someone you care about. That's Mariah's Barbershop, 710 19th Street in Spangler, walk-ins and cash only. First drive, nine plays, 37 yards. They used five minutes and 10 seconds, but came up empty. There was a blindside block, by the way. Now we have a timeout called by Penn's Manor. So we'll take a timeout as well. 434 remaining in the first quarter. We're scoreless. Coming back, Penn's Manor possession at their own 25 on the Renda Media Football Network. Good luck, Colts, from Lynn Sinoco of Northern Cambria, servicing your auto mechanical needs with expert care. Lynn Sinoco has a long list of satisfied customers. Also in Northern Cambria, Medvan Transport, providing non-emergency transports for wheelchair and station car transports for all your medical transport needs. Medvan Transport is now hiring drivers and EMTs. Hello, this is John Lefthal, owner and director of the John A. Lefthal Funeral Home, wishing our Penns Manor Comets much success in the upcoming playoffs. It's always an awesome feeling to achieve success, be it in business or sports. You as players have made our community proud. To be a winner, it takes much dedication, time, and preparation. Give it 100% years from now. As we come back, Max Hill on the carry for Penn's Manor off the right side from the 25 to the 31 yard line. On the tackle, it was Ethan Donatelli, one of the outside linebackers. It'll be second down and four. Yeah, I, I think there was a little confusion on Penn's Manor's part there coming out of the media timeout. The play clock ran down to 10 seconds more before they even had to play in. Second down and six. Fullback is Bagley. Hill goes under center. They give on an inside counter to Corvina. Corvina breaks a tackle to the 45. Forced out of bounds across the way by Ty Dumb. On the tackle for the Colts. He's third on the team with 78 tackles. He leads them, as I mentioned, with six interceptions, but two plays takes them from the 25 to the 46. Big key there was as a block on Shuddy. If they get a helmet on Shuddy, that uh, that keeps the <coughs> excuse me the the linebackers can't get up and make the play. Wide side of the field toward the Penn's Manor bench. That's where they deploy Carter Smith, wingman to the right. They give it up the middle to Bagley, and Bagley a quick burst for about five or four yards to midfield. Mark Bagley, a senior, five ten, one eighty five. Football marked over the 49-yard line. Our yeah, statistician, Jerry Rossi, who has his own sponsor, you know, First Commonwealth Bank. They bring him up here in a limousine, and Jerry tracks the stats for us. And he would tell you when it's over the 49 for stat purposes, that's the 50. That's the 50, so a five-yard pickup. Second down and six. Corvina in motion. And they hand it to Ashton, trying to pick his way for yardage. And he does a nice job of patient running. And he's going to have a first down, I believe, to the 44-yard line of 
the Northern Cambria Colts. Again, Dumb on the far side of the field. Donatelli, I believe, was on attack, in on the tackle there too. Mark, uh, yeah, Ashton's a patient runner, but he I has a burst. Uh, he can uh, get to that I next know. gear pretty quickly. Football this marked at the 44 of the Colts, second time they've been in Northern Cambria territory. Watching Penn's man, there's a, they've been under center. Now they're not this time, but a lot more than we've seen uh, this year from them. Ashton Corvina, 31 yards rushing. Max Hill's gonna keep it, bounces it outside, and he is hit and fumbled the football, but it goes out of bounds. Pretty good lick laid on him by Cody Dumb. I believe that was the inside backer. We'll see if we get a replay from uh, our video producer John Smathers on the TV side and we do and good textbook tackle it wasn't dumb it was actually Ethan Donatelli who hit him yeah really nice st stick it contained him don't let him get to the outside that's what Northern Cambria needs to do 230 you know, this is, Paul, have you I, ever heard the Mistretta meter reference? That's our Mistretta meter. I, I Reminds us to tell the score frequently. It's zeros on the board, 235 remaining, second and 10. And Hill hands it off, coming near side, Marshall. Marshall gets a block, has the 40. Dragged down from behind by Ty Dub at about the 37-yard line. So Hill gains seven yards. It sets up third down and three. Yeah, they like to get that motion, jet motion going and go to the wide field and let um, let Marshall use his speed to get to the corner. Nice job blocking out front by, uh, or by Smith. One for two on third downs. Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Time to be first. Give up the middle to Bagley. Bagley inside the 35. May have enough for the first down. Northern Cambria is moving their defensive linemen around, Mark. They're trying to get uh, Shuddy one-on-one -on -one with anybody they can. Uh, and Penn's Manor also that time moved their right tackle, Tate, to the left tackle. Yeah, they do move their linemen around interchangeable parts. I noticed that earlier in the season when I was preparing for the game against Homer Center in doing our broadcast. It, doing it again here. Jacobs on the left tackle. Sidecar to the left of Max Hill is Bagley and looking to pass is Max. Throws it, it's just over the uh, defender, but it's short hop, uh, Carter Smith. He uh, just uh, didn't get enough loft on that no, football. No, he and I think not. it was Amsdell, 58 yeah, alignment. We'll get a replay here. He had a lot of time there too, Mark. In, uh yeah, Amsdale just got his left hand up. I'm not sure if he deflected think, yeah, or not. Yeah, I think 58. I think you're correct. He did. Sometimes it's actually easier to see on the replay. even live uh, on the monitor. We're in the second level of the Mansion Park Press Box, our S&T Bank broadcast booth, Relationship Banking, one customer at a time. Max loses the handle on it, and now he's smothered from behind by Booker in there defensively, I think that is. Let's see if that's Owen or Delansky. It looks like Owen Booker. Owen yeah, it is. Booker. And he tackles Max Hill for a big loss back to the 44-yard line, a loss of 10. I don't know what happened there, Mark. He just lost control of the ball. He had a, a convoy, out, convoy out in front of him, too. If he maintains control of that ball, there's a lot of room to run out there. Under a minute, 50 seconds remaining. In this scoreless first quarter, clock is running. Third down and 20 to go for the Comets. Carter Smith, receiver, down at the bottom of your screen if you're watching, and they put Marshall in motion. Max Hill dancing around, throws incomplete. Had a receiver starting to break free, Ashton Corvina. But now let's see what Bill Packer does. He'll probably send out the punt team. Yeah, you've got to punt it here, Mark. And this is something we noticed in warm-ups. Um, their normal snapper, uh, Carter Smith, was not snapping in warm-ups. It looks like uh, number eight, um, uh, At Ultimus. Adam Ultimus, is going to be their long snapper. Punter is Justin Marshall. Stands at his own 46-yard line, and they snap it over his head. And he has the punt blocked. And now the football, he does get the punt off. Not going to be roughing because it was blocked. So the Penns Manor fans want roughing the punter, but he blocked it. So that wipes away the penalty with any penalty thought 
with 19 seconds to go. Yeah, if you get a hand on it, and we just said that the normal long snapper is Smith, and this ball is snapped over Marshall's head. Well, let's get on to Jake Slobotnik on the sideline. Jake, a little shift of momentum. Absolutely, but the thing is, this game's still scoreless. This is still anybody's ball game, but the thing for Penn's Manor, I think they just need to breathe, uh, breathe a little bit of a uh, deep breath, really, heading into the second quarter, put this first quarter behind them, put these mistakes behind them. This is something you come back from. For Northern Cambria, they got to get something going offensively in the winding seconds of the first. Lose 11 yards as that turns out. The officials are conferring now. I think that was Edwin Luther who got pressure on Mark Marshall up the middle there, Mark. Well, it all started. The pressure was invited with the bad snap. Yep. I'm not sure what they would be conferring about here, Mark. I didn't see the ball be tipped, but quite possibly the White Hat has a lot better view than me, and he's standing right there. Oh, you mean as far as the pump block? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was blocked. It was tipped. Okay, so there was a conference and nothing come about. They're going to explain it right now. That's what he said. The ball was tipped, blocked. Gotcha. So it's first and 10 for the Colts at the Penns Manor 45-yard line. 19 seconds remaining. I think if you're Northern Camry, you got to take a shot here. Momentum shot down the middle of the field. Still a delay. Now they start the play clock. Northern Cambria comes out with an H back to the right, wingman, and a sidecar to the left of Booker. That's Peronish, I believe, on the carry. Yeah. Nope, it was actually Jack Sheretti in the huddle on the uh, tackle uh, for the Penns Manor Comets. It was Nate Raphael, and that's going to be the final play of the first quarter. When we start the second, it'll be the Colts in Comets territory faced with a third down and eight. No scoring in the first quarter. District 6 Class A championship game from our S&T Bank broadcast booth. Relationship banking, one customer at a time. It's Penn's Manor nothing, Northern Cambria nothing on the Renda Media Football Network. Hello, this is John Leftall, owner and director of the John A. Leftall Funeral Home, wishing our Penns Manor Comets much success in the upcoming playoffs. It's always an awesome feeling to achieve success, be it in business or sports. You as players have made our community proud. To be a winner, it takes much dedication, time, and preparation. Give it 100% years from now, you will look back with fond memories of what you have accomplished. Go get them, Comets. We at the Leftall Funeral Home are behind you 100%. The Climber Slovak Club is a proud supporter of Penn's Manor Athletics and wishes the Comets the best of luck in the playoffs. The Slovak Club opens seven days a week with daily specials, including Tuesday Pasta Night, Taco Wednesdays, Thursday is their famous wing night, and Friday is Peel and Eat Shrimp. Reminder, November 23rd, all-you-can-eat taco bar, and December 10th is the Members' Christmas Party. Bar bingo every Sunday starting at 6, 100% payout. The club is always accepting new members and is now in a membership special, so just stop on by and join the best club in the area. Back with you at Mansion Park in Altoona as we start the second quarter of action. Second down and eight for the Northern Cambria Colts at the uh, Penns Manor 43-yard line. Don't forget, if you're watching or listening, let us know from where. Email us in the booth at d6championship at gmail.com. We'll get to a few of those. That's d6championship at gmail.com. Booker looking to pass, pressure up the middle. He avoids it, flags fly, rolls to his right. Throws has a receiver open, outstanding catch by Peyton Myers, but it's going to come back on a penalty. Want to say hello to Francis watching in Keith Hollow, Pennsylvania. Go Colts. Chris Magolik listening from Las Cruces, New Mexico. The penalty is on Northern Cambria, so it's going to wipe away a sensational catch from Peyton Myers. Holding. Offense, First 59. quarter stats. Penalty. Penn's Second Manor down. 17 rushes, 68 yards. Northern Cambria 2 for 6. Passing negative 2 for Northern Cambria. And, or actually 1 for 2 passing. Uh, 0 for 4 for Penn's Manor. Total yards 68 for Penn's Manor and 4 yards net for Northern Cambria. Time of possession. Comets 9-12. Northern Cambria 248. Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Time to be first. Long Markoff, hold. So it'll be second down and 23. Northern Cambria at their own 42. 
Pressure up the middle, screen pass, and they get it into Myers. Hurdles over his own man into Penn's Manor territory. He leaps his way to the 45, down to about the 44-yard line. That's the athleticism of Peyton Myers as they get a chunk of that yardage back. As a matter of fact, they get the penalty yardage Peyton back, Myers. 13 yards, so it'll be third down and about 10 at the 45. We'll see who made that tackle, as he did a good job of leaping over his lineman, Amsdale, and making the tackle from behind was Nick Raphael. Great, great play ball called by Northern Cambria there. Motion man is Myers, but they give it up the middle and not fooled the Penns Manor Comets. Alex Polenik made that tackle, the six foot, 210 pound sophomore. They limit him to a two yard gain Actually, one yard, they put it down at the 44, so it'll be fourth down and nine. I think you got a punt here if you're Northern Cambria. Greetings from Royal Palm Beach, Florida, enjoying Penn's Manor broadcast. Good luck, Comets. Special hello to Paul. Uh, that has to be uh, Mark Bagley. Uh, he played, he was a junior when I was a senior, and that's a name set, say his na namesake and nephew. Josh but from Crescent watching tonight's game. Punting for the Colts is Ben Janosko, long snapper, his own Booker. It's a kick away from Corvina, far sideline, and it's gonna go out of bounds at about the 15 yard line. The official marks it right at the 15. We'll take a 30 second break. It was a punt covering 29 yards. No score, 10-19 remaining on an IRMC playoff sports no night on the Renda Media. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Coming around the right end with the football for the Comets as we come back to action. Ashton Corvina, as he went to cut Ashton ball, Corvina. he slipped and tackled himself. Yeah. It'll be second down and 10. I think he kind of tripped over the soccer line there, Mark. No, game. Yeah, that, uh, that's her bread and butter, Marshall, going to the right. Second down and 10, Comets. Inside their own 20 at the 15 yard line. Motion man is Marshall and they hand it to him. Marshall trying to get to the edge, dancing around a couple of tacklers, but he can't avoid some others as they, on the far side of the field, go over toward the snow bank and making the tackle. It was Justin Caleb Marshall. Dolney, among others, for Caleb the Dolney. Colts, Ben Janosko. And a lot of white jerseys if you're listening on Cat Country 106.3 or the audio stream on the Trib Live High School Sports Network. The Colts are in their traveling uniforms, white pants, white jerseys, trimmed in black and gold numerals. Penn's Manor two for four on third downs. Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Bagley, protector to the right of Hill, who boots to his right. Trying to get to the edge and they miss one tackle when he throws downfield and he hit. has it intercepted we by late the hit. Northern Cambria Colts and there's a late hit on Hill too. So it's going to be offsetting and they'll end up playing it over. Interception was made by Caleb Dolney, but it will go for not Paul Tatarko. Yeah, um, the first one wasn't so bad. The second one was pretty dangerous, Mark. Jake Slobotnik down on the field. I'm trying to find Jake down there. And there he is. And Jake, that was right near you. Yeah, I almost got trampled by Max Hill. I would have had some words for Jason on Monday. But yeah, that's the right call. Uh, Max is lucky to get that one off because I was picked off. But he took a whale of a shot out of bounds. And Penn's Manor, thankfully, gets a mulligan. Yep, good point. It's not offsetting. It, uh, because there was no other penalty, there's just a late hit, wipes off the interception, so it'll be first and 10. Too bad for Northern Cambria. Well, we got one, kind of one mistake both ways there so far, Mark. The, the snap over the head for, for Penn's Banner and the, a late hit out of bounds for Northern Cambria. So, new set of downs, football at the 31-yard line. Max Hill, read option, keeps it, 
They miss one tackle. Short gain gets to the 35, maybe the 36-yard line. So four or five on that carry for Hill. We'll Hill. update Max's stats That's a gain for you five. in this first half. Second down and five. Max now seven carries for 18 yards. Peronish, Colton Peronish on that tackle. Second down, we'll call it six. Under nine minutes to play in this scoreless first half. We'll have interviews with both coaches at halftime. I believe Bill Packer will be first coming off of the field, and then we'll get Sam Schutte when the Colts return out of their locker room here at Mansion Park. Inside reverse to Marshall, staying home and making that tackle was Cody Dumb. He did break free from Dumb and gained on second effort a couple of yards extra up to the 40-yard line, so it'll be set up third down and one yard to go. Nice play by Cody uh, staying at home there. That's difficult to do when you get the flow going one way and you stay. You gotta stay home as that linebacker on the back side, especially against Penn's Manor. They like that inside counter and a uh, little reverse. Got some more texts coming in. Don't forget, let us know where you're watching or listening. You can email us at d6championship at gmail.com. And the give and bouncing it is Corvina, and they're going to stop them shy of that lead chain. Good defense by the Northern Cambria Colts. And leading the way was Peyton Myers and Ethan Donatelli. Great flow to the full football by Northern Cambria there, Todd. I'm really surprised Pence Manor handed that full book football off. We usually see them on short yardage just leave the ball in Max's hands. Fourth down, and Penn's Manor will send out the punt team. They lost a half a yard inside the 40-yard line. At least they show punt. Yeah. Snapper is Carter Smith, so now they shift, and it looks like they may go for it. We saw this the other day. And they pull Northern Cambria off yep. side. They did the same thing last week, Mark. Only Penn's Manor moved before the snap. Against Homer Center, the Colts committed 13 or 14 penalties, and that included being drawn offside four times. Before the penalty, Interesting. timeout, Penn's Manor. Oh, oh my. before the penalty, Penn's Manor called a timeout. Well, we will take one with them with 7.13 to play in a scoreless first half. Penn's Manor nothing, Northern Cambria nothing on the Renda Media Football Network. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. On the sideline, Jake looks like Bill Packer sending the offense back out. And rightfully so. It's a short yardage situation late in the second quarter. I totally understand this, so absolutely a great call sending back out the offense. Guys, before we get back to the action, I want to wish uh, or I want to thank uh, Bernadette Polenik for messaging us. She messaged me privately saying, Go Comets! Thank you, Bernadette. Back to you guys. Hearing from a lot of fans from both teams. Fourth down and a long yard, and Hill wants to keep it, and they have him bottled up, and they're going to tackle him for a loss back at the 31-yard line. Ethan Donatelli with an outstanding play defensively, and the strategy backfires, and Northern Cambria will have the ball fairly deep in Penn's Manor territory. Yeah, I don't know about going, to f but going for it right there, Mark, but uh, 18 years experience in my zero, I don't have any room to question that. So they lose... Boy, they lost about eight yards, nine yards on that play. Start out first and ten at the 31-yard line. So 7.06 remaining. Northern Cambria for the second time starting in Penn's Manor territory, but this time at the 31. Last possession, they started at the Penn's Manor 43. Owen Booker takes the snap. Little wide receiver screen and some trickery. They throw downfield, and it's almost intercepted by Carter Smith. If it's thrown deep, it's going to be a touchdown, but Ty Dum underthrew it. Yeah, he got behind the defense, but the Carter did a good job staying back there. Was that ball thrown back? Yes, it was. Carter almost had a pick there. We have the benefit of the replay in the booth. 
Second down and 10, wide side of the field if you're watching up top toward the Colts bench. And quick toss to Peronish. Peronish trying to get to the edge, runs through one tackle to the 25 to the 20, first down yardage for the Northern Cambria Colts. Outstanding run by Colton Peronish on the tackle. Justin Marshall. First down brought to you by First National Bank. From clicks to bricks, they have you covered. Experience the FNB e-store, First National Bank. That pitch almost looked like it was forward, Marsh. That could have been called an incomplete pass. Except he caught it, right? Yeah. First down and 10. We'll see how Jerry ruled that. Good point. Booker to pass, throws through the hands of Delansky intercepted. and intercepted. And with the football for the Penns Manor Comets, it was Justin Marshall on the pick. It went through Delansky's hands and into the hands of Marshall. And Justin Marshall's fourth interception of the season gives the Comets the ball back with 6.43 remaining in this scoreless first half. He had a pick six against them in the first game, Mark. I think it was like 93 yards for a touchdown. So, yeah, that ball was tipped out. Uh, that's tough, tough for uh, Owen there with a tipped ball. So the Comets will start at the 27-yard line. As they... Avoid disaster there after Max Hill was tackled for that loss and Hill is knifed down nicely on the near side of the field making that play defensively Max Hill. was Ben Janosko ben and they limit Janosko. Max from the 27. They're going to put the football down at about the 32 yard line, a five yard gain. Want to say hello to, let's see here, got to get caught up on all of these uh, messages. Vina watching from Kane, Pennsylvania. Go Comets. Darren watching live from Benamides Tavern. Huge shout out for Renda Digital TV for putting out so many of the Comets games on video this year. Been really enjoying it. Good evening, names uh, Frank, class of 2009 at Penn's Manor. Want to say go Comets. Give to Corvina. Corvina is going to be stacked up right near the line of scrimmage and pushed back. It was Peyton Myers and Ethan Donatelli. Donatelli is a good linebacker. Boy, they have three good linebackers. They're all over the field. And you got to credit the big boys up front for keeping the offensive linemen off the linebackers. No gain on the play. Did no a really gain. Nice job up front. Third down and five. Third down and no surprises five to here, go. Mark, from either team yet. I mean that that pass pitch patch. Uh, I think Penn's Manor is three for six on third down now. Third down and five to go here. They need to get to their own 37 yard line. Ball's at the 32. Short side of the field toward the Comets bench. Max Hill goes empty, throws an out pattern, has Carter Smith for a first down. Carter bangs and plows his way up to the 48 yard line before he's finally tackled by the uh, Northern Cambria Colts, Caleb Dolmy. That was, that was a really nice throw by Max, right on the money to Carter. That almost could have been called a pick there if I, when I watched the replay on uh, Marshall. The uh, referee obviously didn't see that, see it that way. I think Northern Cambria's coaches were yelling for that. 15-yard pickup, first completion of the night to Smith for Hill. First completion, give to Bagley, and Northern Cambria stacks him up right near the line of scrimmage. And Dawson Schutte gets up off the bottom of the pile again, along with Colton Peronish defensively. No gain. Yeah, this is a change for Penn's Manor with Max under center a lot. I don't know if Northern was expecting this. Uh, the games that we've seen the last five or, five or six times I've saw PM play, Max was in a shotgun a lot more. Second and 10. Or the pistol, you want to call it. From the gun, and he takes the direct snap, throws an out pattern, too tall for Carter Smith that time. On the coverage was Dolney for the Northern Cambria Colts, so the Comets will be faced with third down and nine as we come to you from our S&T Bank broadcast booth. Thanks to the entire crew. Good to have the band back together. Jerry Rossi, our statistician, John Smathers, our digital producer, engineering back in Indiana tonight in the Cat Country studios is Lucas Lane, and we also have Joe Weister and Peyton Trollinger running our cameras tonight. Four for seven on third down, the Comets are, and they send Carter Smith to the left boundary. 
and Max Hill takes the snap, dancing around, throwing over the middle. It's a wobbler, and it's too tall for the intended receiver. That is a mean leave, and it will be fourth down for the Comets, and here come the punt team. Ty Dump on the coverage, the safety, who is a ball hawk with those six interceptions. As I mentioned, 23 interceptions for the Northern Cambria Colts this season. Turnover ratio plus 18, that's outstanding. It sure is, Mark. The ball's just floating a little bit on Max, uh, and that's what happened <clears throat> That's what happened with um, Owen, too. Marshall to punt, and oh. it's uh, Shank, and it's, it's going to come near side and go out of bounds at the 40 or 38-yard uh, line. We're going to have immediate timeout, a punt of only 13 yards net. 3.50 to play in the first half. We're still scoreless. Penn's men are nothing, and the Northern Maybe Cambria Colts nothing on an IRMC playoff sports night on the Renda Media Football Network. Hi, this is George Tate of Tate Supermarket and Climber, established in 1906. And ever since, it's been our family's mission to be the best community grocery store that we can be. It's been so gratifying that the people of Indiana County have voted Tate Supermarket as the best grocer in Indiana County. We are so grateful and have always strived to live up to our motto that the most important item in our store has always been you, the customer. Thanks again from Tate Supermarket in Clymer, Pennsylvania. The team at Smith Colon Oil knows how hard work and dedication pay off. Tonight's athletes and coaches have done their communities proud, and Smith Colon Oil is pleased to be a sponsor of this great matchup. Good luck to all the athletes tonight and the rest of the season. Speaking of seasons, the weather is turning cooler. Need coal, heating oil, or propane? Give the team at Smith a call, and don't let fall and winter catch you by surprise. Smith Colon Oil in Northern Cambria, 814-948-4708. We are scoreless. Penn's Manor and Northern Cambria, no points. First meeting, all Penn's Manor, 40 to 14. But that was then, and this is now. Yeah, no surprises for either team, Mark. They've studied game film well, and they're stopping both teams, or both defense, defenses are stopping them the offense. 350 remaining in this scoreless first half. Peyton Myers in motion on the jet. And they hand it off to him, and he spins over the 40 up to the 41-yard line. Mark Bagley on the stop, along with Nate Raphael for the Penns Manor Comets. It'll be a gain of three. The offense is kind of mirroring each other right now, Mark. The Northern's running some plays that they didn't run in the first game. I don't know if it was because of injuries or... But um, they're, they're running some different plays. Ben Janosko, a receiver, if you're watching at the bottom of your screen. Again, Peyton Myers in motion, and they fake it. They're going to lob it over the middle, and they have Delansky open. 40, 35. Be tackled at the 30-yard line. That play is going to cover 29 yards and a first down. Great fake by the quarterback and pulling it out of there. Down, down the seam like we talked about before. And Delansky. Austin got to wrap his arms and make a tackle there instead of trying to blow somebody up. Yep, that's what uh, exactly happened on that. Football at the 30-yard line. Owen Booker, 140 of 228 coming in, 61%, 2,032 yards passing and 20 touchdowns. And now some confusion, and Northern Cambria is going to take a timeout with 2.37 remaining in the first half on an IRMC playoffs Northern sports night. Northern Cambria threatening late in the second quarter, but we're scoreless on the Renda Media Football Network. We are West Central Equipment, Pennsylvania's largest family-owned John Deere dealer. From farming equipment to riding lawnmowers to our new addition of compact construction equipment, we pride ourselves on working with those who work with the land. And the Slazak family has been serving Western PA through four generations since 1938. We have locations in Butler, New Alexandria, Somerset, Evansburg, and Martinsburg. Visit us online at westcentraleq.com. Hello, this is John Lefthal, owner and director of the John A. Lefthal Funeral Home, wishing our Penns Manor Comets much success in the upcoming playoffs. It's always an awesome feeling to achieve success, be it in business or sports. You as players have made our community proud. To be a winner, it takes much dedication, time, and preparation. 
give it 100% years from now, you will look back with fond memories of what you have accomplished. Go get them, Comets. We at the Left All Funeral Home are behind you 100%. You at Mansion Park, first and ten out of the timeout for the Colts. Myers again in motion, and they hand it to him on the jet handoff. He cuts it up and gets a couple from the 30 to about the 28, maybe the 27-yard line, depending on the spot. Defensively for the Penns Manor Comets making the tackle, nose guard Nick Raphael. Hello from Houston, Texas. We had a response and a whole bunch of uh, folks sending us some emails. Frank Long watching from Baltimore, Maryland. Group watching at the Climber Slovak Club. And we thank them for their sponsorship. We give, uh, no, it's uh, the quarterback fumbling the football. It is Owen Booker in the Comets habit as Booker lost the handle on it. Max Hill on the recovery. Actually, I think Max chased forced it. Forced it, yes. Number 52, Peyton Costco. Co Costco, Peyton Costco recovered it. So it was forced by Max Hills. We see the replay now. And the Comets dodge another bullet. Max chased him down from behind, rushing off that right outside linebacker position. So the Comets at their own 26 with 158 remaining. Max Hill, empty set, and he looks pump fake. Now he's gonna throw over the middle and he has Corvina tackled in his tracks, but a good solid gain from the 26 yard line up to about the 33. Mm, Max almost jumped in the air to throw that ball, to, or Mark, you're a, uh, you old enough to go back to the old Ernie Widmar I was pass. talking about that this morning, actually, with my father. And uh, I thought maybe Northern would try that um, just because Penn's Manor blitzes those middle linebackers so much. Mike, Penn's Manor class of 2001 watching in Jensen Beach, Florida. Hello, Mike, and thank you. Second down and four to go. Slant pattern too tall for the intended receiver, Corvina. We want to thank... Tate Supermarket and the Climber Slovak Club are presenting sponsors on Renda Digital TV. We mentioned the big gang watching at the Climber Slovak Club and uh, somebody I think was sending out a shout out to you, Paul. Uh, there's so many coming in, it's hard to even keep track. McIntyre, Pennsylvania. My good friend, Jack Yard. Jack pulling for the comments tonight. Jack, good to hear from you. It's a great guy. Yes, he great is. Great man. Max Hill on third down and four, trying to escape pressure. Going to keep it, gets to the 35, slips to the 37, 38, has a first down. Got out of bounds. And the clock is Max stopped Hill. with 68 seconds Holy remaining. God. They're going to mark it up at the 40. That first down brought to you by First National Bank. Branches in Northern Cambria and Penns Manor. They wish the Colts and the Comets good luck. On the tackle, it was... Cody Dumb, but a new set of downs for the Comets. Mike Gallagher watching the game in Peters Township tonight. Thanks for the compliments, Mike. Give to Corvina. Bounces it outside and forced out of bounds by Peyton Myers up at about the 43 or 44 yard line. It'll be a gain of about four yards and it'll be second down and six. Tell my cuz Paul, shout out at the Climber Slovak Club, but sorry, no halupki there. Boy, that rules me out. I wanted some post-game halupki from the <laughs> Climber Slovak Club. Grace from Climber, go Comets. Thank you for broadcasting these games, Renda Media, they, uh, Grace says. The Hangtown crew watching from Hangtown, Pennsylvania. Let's go Colts. Max Hill, deep drop, all kind of time. Throws over the middle, intercepted by Myers at the 30. To the 35, right hash, 50 to the 40. Bounces it outside, 35 tackled at the 33 yard line. Peyton Myers again with another interception and there's a flag back up field too so we'll have to see what this penalty is all about. Yeah, I think that ball might have sailed on Max. The ball sailing on him a little bit tonight. Here's an email we just got in the booth from Vancouver, British Columbia. Hello, 
And we love the Colts. Colton Peronish sending a, love, a lot of love to Colton. Holding. Colt pride lasts forever. Thank you, Whitney. All the way from Vancouver. 38-yard interception return. Northern Cambria. Penalty is on the Comets. On the Colts. Or, I'm sorry, on the Colts. Jake Slobotnik, down to you. That pass, I think Paul's right. Uh, just sailed a little bit. I, I'm looking for the flag here. Smith fell down too, I believe. The flag is around midfield, but yeah, I, we've seen that all night, guys, that the passes have just sort of gone away from these quarterbacks, Max Hill being the one with a lot of ones that have went errant. I'm not too sure if it's because of the cold affecting the grip on the ball. Paul did bring up a good point in the pregame. The Rock is going to be a little bit harder to grab with how you know how cold it is here tonight. So that, I, I think that's the leading contributor, but yeah, a lot of air mail here tonight at Mansion Park. So the Colts at their own 43-yard line. Sidecar to the left, and they send him in motion out of the backfield is Shiretti, and they throw the opposite side, and with running room, with the football to the 40-yard line of the Penns Manor Comets, that is Ty Dumb, his 35th reception of the season with 41 seconds left. They restart the clock timeout situation. Northern Cambria has two. A little wide receiver screen is what that was, Mark. First and 10 at the 40. And Booker, pressure up the middle, throws, it's intercepted. And with the football, Amin Lieb as the teams play giveaway, takeaway. And this time it's the Comets taking away with 17 seconds left. That's Amin's third INT on the year, boy. He, he drops back there for a sophomore. Um, if you talk to Coach Packer, he's been their biggest surprise on the team this year, Mark. So, nice pass play to Dum. And then that's an interception. I think he might have got him in the first game also. Timeout called with 17 Time seconds out. remaining. Northern Cambria. Called by Northern Cambria. We're scoreless. Indiana Regional Medical Center Championship Sports Night from Mansion Park in Altoona continues. Northern Cambria nothing, Penn's Manor nothing on the Renda Media Football Network. So what sets s and apart from other financial institutions is that they are visionary. Now, we understand that it is partially about the numbers, but they know it's not just about the numbers. It's about the management team, it's about the strategic and business plan, it's about how the team is going to execute on that. In short, s and gets it. Quite honestly, we couldn't have done it without s and The Climber Slovak Club is a proud supporter of Penn's Manor Athletics and wishes the Comets the best of luck in the playoffs. The Slovak Club opens seven days a week with daily specials, including Tuesday Pasta Night, Taco Wednesdays, Thursday is their famous wing night, and Friday is Peel and Eat Shrimp. Reminder, November 23rd, all-you-can-eat taco bar, and December 10th is the Members' Christmas Party. Bar bingo every Sunday starting at 6, 100% payout. The club is always accepting new members and is now in a membership special, so just stop on by and join the best club in the area. Corvina, but Max Hill's going to keep it around the left end to midfield to the 45 to the 40 and tiptoes his way up the sideline and out of bounds at the 41 yard line. It'll be a gain of 19 with 10 seconds remaining. It's one of their favorite plays, Mark, is to run Max to the left. He seems to get the head of steam going when he goes left. But Northern's in to prevent defense, uh, watching against the pass, so they're giving them that. Not sure how many pe timeouts Penn's Manor has left. Comets with one timeout, both teams with one timeout nice. remaining. See it now on the big scoreboard. Open my eyes. It is a beautiful scoreboard here at Mansion <laughs> Park. Nice big numbers. First and 10, that's kind of irrelevant with 10 seconds remaining. They're at the 41 of the Colts, booting to his right. Hill throws, has a receiver. Corvina at the 30, and it goes out of bounds at the 25. Peyton Myers with three seconds on the clock, and the Comets will have one shot at the end zone. A gain of 16. Well done as we look on our replay monitor. And Corvina just took it in and took what he could get, and a timeout called 
as Northern Cambria wants to set their defense. We'll take a 30 second break and come back to conclude the first half. One shot at the end zone for the Comets when we return with three ticks on the second quarter clock. Penn's men are nothing, Northern Cambria nothing on the Renda Media Football Network. We are West Central Equipment, Pennsylvania's largest family-owned John Deere dealer. From farming equipment to riding lawnmowers to our new addition of compact construction equipment, we pride ourselves on working with those who work with the land. And the Slazak family has been serving Western PA through four generations since 1938. We have locations in Butler, New Alexandria, Somerset, Evansburg, and Martinsburg. Visit us online at westcentraleq.com. You can email us in the booth here. Let us know where you're listening or watching. Email address d6championship at gmail.com. They like to run in out here to Carter. Bagley, a receiver to the left boundary. Pressure up the middle. Max loads up, throws for the end zone, and it's intercepted in the end zone by the Northern Cambria Colts. And I think that was Peyton Myers again on the interception. And the first half is over. Let's go down to Jake Slobotnik. Jake's going to have a word with Comets head coach Bill Packer, this scoreless first half of action. Jake. All right, Mark, thanks so much. Trying to wrangle Coach Packer here. Coach, turnover's been the name of the game uh, since really the opening kickoff. Your assessment of your team's performance overall? Yeah, just too many mistakes. We're having too many mistakes, too many breakdowns, and, uh, you know, we've got to fix that. But uh, and we've got to block better up front and give Max a little bit of time to throw the ball. Uh, we're going to have to throw it a bit, so uh, hopefully we can do that. You knew coming into this game that Northern Cambria would be a little bit better than when you saw them earlier in the season. Your assessment on how they've matched up against you against you guys so far? Yeah, we knew it was going to be tough, but we know they have a great team. That's how they got this far, so uh, you know uh, we knew it was going to be a tough one, and, and uh, hopefully we can just come out and outplay them in the second half because we didn't do a very good job first half. Talking about Max, a very emotional player. Uh, he's had some mistakes. What are some ways you think you can calm him down for the second half get his head back in the game well we'll do that now we'll, we'll go in there and talk he'll he'll be all right he'll be ready to go uh you know he's just a kid that just uh he gets worked up when he does something he feels that he does something wrong and and uh he's just got to play as a team and not not worry about it because we know what he can do thanks coach best of luck the second half thanks a lot jake coach bill packer the pens manor comets as his team heads into halftime in a scoreless contest back to you guys all right thank you very much jake and we'll hear from sam shooty when the colts come out of the locker room a lot of mistakes, turnovers both ways on this cold night at Mansion Park. District 6 championship, Penn's men are looking for their second in school history. Colts in search of their first. We're deadlocked, nothing apiece at the half. We'll kick off our halftime show. We'll look at the stats and recap the first half when we continue from Mansion Park in Altoona on the Renda Media Football Network. Good luck to the Comets and the Colts in the District 6 Championship game from your hometown team at Freedom Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Northern Cambria. Winter is coming and the incredible tire sale is on at Freedom. Buy three tires and get the fourth for $1. Stop or call Freedom about the most trusted tire brands available. All buy three, get the fourth for a buck. Offer valid now through November 30th, but don't wait. Nobody does tires and service like Freedom in Northern Cambria. Call Freedom Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram at their lucky number, 814-948-7777. Robindale Energy Services is a proud supporter of high school athletics and our hometown community. To do its part for the local rural areas, Robindale Energy has been cleaning up refuse coal piles that dot the western Pennsylvania landscape. These waste piles, remnants from past decades of mining in the region, are removed and used to create affordable energy for America. Robindale Energy has helped to clean up hundreds of miles of streams and channels. In the area where the land has been restored for a while, streams have become alive again and able to support plant and fish life. For employment opportunities, contact Robindale Energy at 814-446-6700, extension 120. Looking for one of the coolest new products in the market or maybe looking for that unique Christmas present? Psst, it will cure your pain at the pump. SeaWorld Satellites is now offering the Go Express e-bike. Made for the urban commuter and weekend adventure. Combining city cruising and all-terrain riding. From pavement to hills, streets to sand. Take your Go Express bike to your next meeting or exploration. This e-bike can run up to 18 miles in a 
electric mode to look at or take a test ride, come to SeaWorld Satellites on Wayne Avenue in Indiana. For the best place to dine in the area, Luigi's Ristorante is an excellent choice before or after any game this season or for lunch or dinner throughout the week. Every Wednesday starting at 4 p.m., try two spaghetti dinners, both with meatball salad and bread, only $12.99 dine-in or $14.99 takeout. For excellent Italian food and wonderful service, come to Luigi's Ristorante in Clymer. Voted gold, best all-around restaurant, and best fine dining restaurant in Indiana County. Our S&T Bank broadcast booths, uh, booth, plenty of mistakes for both teams, and we'll recap the game for you in just a moment. But first, I want to get to Mike Mastovich, the longtime beat writer from the Tribune Democrat in Johnstown. Just a few weeks ago, we were emceeing the Appalachian Bowl, right? And uh, here, here you are covering this football game. First time ever that two Heritage Conference uh, teams have met in the District 6 Championship. Yeah, impressive. Four in the semifinals, so there were going to be two here no matter what happened. And uh, we were at that bank, uh, the luncheon that you talked about, and there, there was a lot of great uh, Heritage Conference representation there and some great stories and a lot of tradition. A lot of uh, mistakes in the first half. Your impressions? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, Penn's Manor, I was just looking here before we went on the air. I counted 11 first downs with one by penalty. And Northern Camry had none in the first quarter, and I think uh, I, I haven't officially done, but I think three in the second quarter. So uh, Penn's Manor seemed to be moving the ball a lot more effectively. Northern Camry opportunistic. They, they came up with some big defensive plays at the right time to stop long drives. And then uh, the second quarter, we saw so many uh, interceptions and fumbles and, and turnovers. So. It seemed like everybody's trying to wait for that uh, just to get in that groove and, and maybe get something rolling here. Yep, and uh, these two teams, uh, you might have heard a rumor or two about me that I'm kind of, you know, I've never been a real proponent of private schools hanging around Class A. I don't know, uh, Mike, if you've ever heard that. Uh, yeah, no, about, no, no, I've never I, heard I, that I, from you. Yeah, yeah. So it's Bishop Guilfoyle, of course, now they're wreaking havoc in, in double A, uh, and they won a championship last night. But I do think it's great that two public schools like Northern Cambria and Penn's Manor so many times uh, throughout the years, as you know, I've covered Homer Center a lot. Homer Center's got a couple against Bishop Guilfoyle in championship games, but it's, uh, it's always difficult, and I, I think it's nice to see the public schools and just the excitement that it brings in the Northern Cambria and the Climber communities. Oh, yeah, you could see it uh, throughout the season. And I, I notice a lot of times, um, you know, when we do our stories, every, everything now is monitored on clicks. And Northern Cambria is always one of those that a lot of reads. And, uh, you know, so you know there's a lot of interest in our community. Every time you write a, a feature or a preview on them, you seem to get a lot of feedback. And so you know they got a great fan base. They're a great tradition. Uh, they haven't been in this game since 2003. But they've had a few semifinal shots. And then before the district playoffs, I remember doing a lot of stories on their team in 79 that went against Jeff Hostetler and Township. Uh, they had a great run in the 70s too. It's just a uh, great great tradition in Northern Camry. I went to college with a few guys from up there and they always told me this, the stories and now you know when I became a sports writer I got to see them firsthand. Yeah they I think it was around the 1998 or 9 when they uh, formed Northern Cambry of course incorporating Barnesboro and Spangler yeah. which that dates back to 1893. I happen to know that for those two coal mining communities. So good uh, hard-working people. Same thing in the Greater Penns Manor School District, yeah. and it makes it special. Yeah, I indeed. It's great to see uh, the communities on both sides here. Uh, the Penns Manor people are sitting right below us, so I can't see them as much, but I can see it across the way, and I, I hear a lot of the Penns Manor cheering here, so it's a lot of enthusiasm. What do you expect in the second half? Well, I'll tell you what, uh, after seeing Penns Manor moving the ball the way they did in, in the first half, I would give them a little bit of an edge, but man, Northern Camry's defense has just uh, really stepped up. They're trying to contain when, when uh, Max Hill is running to the sidelines and trying to, to get that edge. They've been doing a pretty good job sometimes stopping him. Now other times they're breaking that big play. But uh, their defense has um, really stepped up and Penn's Manor looks like they're one big break or one big play from maybe getting things rolling here because 11 first downs in the first half. Finally, the winner of this game will play in their backyard, perhaps 
no matter who wins, it'll be played at uh, Pat Corrigan Field against the Canton Warriors. They defeated Muncie. What a benefit to have a bye week heading into a state quarterfinal. Yeah, because everything I've heard about this Canton team, uh, I don't have any first-hand knowledge of them, but everything, uh, talking to some of the media up here, they, they're, they're apparently uh, really the real deal, real tough. So at least uh, our teams won't have to travel out there, though, because I, I heard that would be a couple-hour drive. Okay, what's the deadline tonight? Uh, well, there's no print edition, but you still got to get that thing early. They want it online. So I'm going to try to be done by uh, 10.30, 10.45. Mike Mastovich, thanks for joining us. And if your board would like to see at Miller Stadium when the Hawks host Ashland Hi, in the uh, national tournament IEP, next week. go, go. Go Hawks. All right. A good friend of Jack Benedict, too. Mike Mastovich joining us from the Tribune Democrat. Coming back to Mansion Park in Altoona. Our score at the half. It's Northern Cambria nothing and the Penns Manor Comets nothing. You're listening and watching on the Renda Media Football Network. A couple things Jerry pointed out. Business happens here, and here, and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. Right now at Luther Ford, order your new Ford and lock in 2.9% APR financing for 60 months, no matter when your new vehicle comes in. That's right, order your new vehicle now, and your interest rate is locked in even if rates go up. Just stop in today and drive away in your new vehicle from Luther Ford. Luther Ford, two great locations, Homer City and Evansburg. Click on LutherFord.com. You can find just about any kind of home online. Starter, fixer-upper, or your dream home. Now, finding the right mortgage is just as easy. With the FNBE Store, you can explore loan options and get a great rate. Add to cart, then check out. Online or in person. From clicks to bricks, we've got you covered. Experience the FNBE Store in branch, online, or on your phone today. Come have fun with the Cherry Hill Township Volunteer Fire Company. Get it on the calendar now. Bingo every Wednesday and Saturday at 645. Come have some laughs at the Comedy Night, December 9th. And of course, Breakfast with Santa in December. Keep listening for details or check them out online at cht240.com. The Cherry Hill Township Volunteer Fire Company. Protecting, investing in, and supporting their community. Including supporting the students at the Penns Manor School District. Go Comets! Gaston Services of Nicktown would like to congratulate both the Colts and the Comets on a successful season. Gaston Services has been serving Cambria and Indiana counties for over 25 years with services including parking lot maintenance, repair and line painting, lawn mowing, landscape services, general hauling and large tree trimming. Also remember to call Gaston Services for snow removal. It's coming. Online visit gaston-services.com. Let's give you the stats in this football game. First for the Northern Cambria Colts. They had only 29 rushing yards on seven carries. And leading the way, Peyton uh, or uh, Pranish, one carry, 15 yards. Peyton Myers, two carries for five yards. Jack Sheretti, two carries for three yards. Uh, quarterback Owen Booker, one carry, six yards. Passing, Booker was four of seven for 57 yards, but he took uh, or he threw two interceptions. They ran only 14 plays in the first half for 86 yards. We'll give you some additional numbers in a moment. For Penns Manor, leading the way, Max Hill, 11 carries, 41 yards. 
Ashton Corvina, 10 carries for 34 yards. Justin Marshall, 5 for 23. Mark Bagley, 3 rushes for 7 yards. A total 29 rushes for 105 yards. Pass, passing, Max Hill, 3 of 12 for 38 yards. He threw 2 interceptions. Penn's Manor, Paul, 41 plays for 143 yards. Just 14 for 86, as I mentioned, for the Colts. Yeah, a couple penalty, a couple penalties, excuse me, Mark, uh, for Northern hurt them. Uh, I think they had three for 35 yards, and Penn's Manor had one for 10. But the bad snap could be considered a turnover, too, also. Penn's Manor had punted twice for one yard in the yep. first half. First downs, 10 for Penn's Manor, three for Northern Cambria. Third down conversions, 0 for 2 for the Colts, 5 for 9 for the Penns Manor Comets. Penalties, as uh, we mentioned, 3 for 35 on the Colts, 1 for 10 on the Penns Manor Comets. And uh, a lot of turnovers, as we've talked about, and Penns Manor will be getting the ball to start the second half. I think Jake Slobotnik should ha have, uh, actually, Northern Cambria uh, will be getting the ball, right, to start the second half. Let's yes, Northern will get the ball to start the second half. Let's go across the field. I think Jake Slobotnik has head coach Sam Schutte of the Northern Cambria Colts. Jake? Well, guys, come back to me in about a minute. All right, we'll come back to Jake. Actually, we'll take a 60-second break and come back to Jake Slobotnik. We're scoreless. Penns Manor, Northern Cambria on the Renda Media Football Network. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. The team at Sheets and Climber would like to wish all the athletes the best of luck in tonight's matchup. If you're watching and listening and you're hungry or thirsty, Sheets and Climber is the place to go. Before, during, after the game, or anytime. MTO sandwiches, hot dogs, crispy chicken, fresh salads, or cool down with a smoothie, candy, gummies, fried pickles, mac and cheese bites, and jalapeno poppers. Don't forget to bring your Sheets rewards card and take advantage of great Sheets offers. Sheets and Climber, a proud partner of the Penn's Manor Comet. Yeah, Smooth, we're scoreless at the half. We heard from Penn's Manor's Bill Packer going off the field. Sam Schutte is now with Jake Slobotnik across on the far side of the Mansion Park turf. Jake. All right, Mark, thanks so much. Coach, uh, nothing, nothing at the halftime, but really you guys have played stout defensively, forced a couple turnovers. It's got to feel good knowing you guys have forced uh, Penn's Manor to rethink things sometimes. It does, but again, turnovers are killing us. we got to have Booker to set, settle down relax, play the type of football he's been playing all year. Um, turnovers just can't happen this half. Second half, you guys get the ball to start things off. How, how uh, pivotal is it to open this half with a score and get on top? That's very important. we gotta get, we got to get our team back on track, and, and this first half, this first drive is going to tell, tell the deal. Thanks, Coach. Best of luck. Yep, thanks. Coach Sam Schutte with the Northern Cambria Colts. Guys, back to you. All right, thank you, Jake. And that's our halftime report. Stay with us for the second half kickoff coming up next. Penn's Manor kicking off to Northern Cambria as our District 6 championship coverage continues from Mansion Park in Altoona with the score of Penn's Manor nothing and the Northern Cambria Colts nothing on the Renda Media Football Network. Checking accounts look a little different these days, and Marion Center Bank can help you customize your account with features like credit and identity theft monitoring, cash back on debit card purchases, plus travel and shopping discounts. For teens and young adults, a student checking with mobile banking options. Pay friends and family with our newest person-to-person -person payment solution, Zelle. Marion Center Bank, a small town bank with big bank technology. Stop in or call a local branch today or visit MarionCenterBank.com. Marion Center Bank, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Just like the Penns Manor offensive line provides great protection for the running backs, Gillen's Gun Shop on Airport Road in Indiana can help you with a wide selection of firearms for your family's protection. Gillen's also specializes in firearms and ammunition for sports shooting hobbies, hunting needs, and gun bash products. Gillen's would like to wish the Comets the best of luck the rest of the season and let Brighton know how proud they are of him. Keep up the great work, Comets, from the team at Gillen's Gun Shop on Airport Road. 
Involved in a collision or accident? Call the Collision Repair Specialist, Petroff's A1 Auto Body. A family-owned business since 1946, Petroff's A1 Auto Body has been bringing you the best customer service in the area. Petroff's A1 Auto Body is committed to providing quality services and going above and beyond to ensure their customers are completely satisfied. Call Petroff's A1 Auto Body and Climber, the Collision Repair Specialist, at 724-254-9417. Go Jake Slobotnik and our entire Renda sports crew here tonight. John Smathers, our video producer, statistician Jerry Rossi in the booth. Also our camera guys, Joe Weister and Peyton Trollinger. Thank you guys. So many texts coming in. Kyle watching from Covington, Kentucky. Go Comets. Poe Heighton, Virginia. Hey, Paul, Denise, and Guy Ailes watching tonight's game. Guy the Sawala family from Cherry Tree taking in tonight's game. Tony watching from Rural Valley. Go Comets. Sherry, they're tuned in in Ontario, Canada watching the championship game. And O'Brien kick taken at the 19-yard line. And with the football for the Penns Manor Comets. Colts. Or, um, yeah, the Northern Cambria Colts, excuse me, as I look at our monitor across the way trying to pick up who had that and football. The on the return, Adam Altimus on the tackle. Altimus made the tackle. I'm not sure if that was Shreddy or who had that football. Those numbers were hard to read, for at least for me anyway. I might be showing my age now. I might need a pair of those glasses, Mark. You got an extra pair on you? Uh -huh. <laughs> Bob and Missy Hill go comments watching in Howwood. Matt, Becky, Hunter, and Carly, they're cheering on from Chicago, Illinois, the Windy City. First and 10, Colts at their own 39-yard line. And Booker, wide receiver, a little bubble screen. And with the football for the Northern Cambria Colts, as they help them up, good sportsmanship from Mark Bagley. That was Ty Dumb on the reception. Ty and up. on the tackle, Nick Raphael. Nathan. They're on... Yeah. Nathan, yeah, I had that problem back against Homer Center. <laughs> Gain of six, second down and six at the 45-yard line. Gain of six. Some fans watching, Colts fans from Wilmington, North Carolina. Toss left to Peronish. Peronish upended but stumbles ahead over the 45 to the 47-yard line. Again, it was Nate Raphael that upended him. But I think Max trimmed, tripped him up originally. Colton Peronish. Sets up third down and two. Okay. Pranish coming into tonight's game, 87 rushes, 647 yards, a 7.4 average. He's missed a few games too, Mark. Hello to Shauna and Cloyd Hall Himes of Northern Cambria. Third and a deuce, jet sweep, and Myers has a first down into Penn's Manor territory. Peyton Myers tackled on the play by Adam Altimus, but the Colts moved the chains. Great ball, great ball fake Adam by uh, the quarterback there, Mark. Um, five, he does a really nice job of, uh, of shifting the ball around so the defense can't see who has it. Football at the Penns Manor 48 yard line. Wide side of the field toward the Comets bench. Booker from the gun. Nope, they snap it to Peronish. And Peronish into the secondary to the 35, tackled at the 32 yard line by Max, or uh, Carter Smith, it was Golden on the Ryan. tackle. The Golden Comets' Ryan. leading Golden tackler Ryan. entering the action tonight with 157 tackles, but a gain of 15 to the 33. Yeah, Northern Cam Cambria's coming out, and they're not, not the putting the ball up. They're running the ball right down at, at Penn's Manor. From the Comets, 32. Trips to the left. And again, a direct snap as they go Wildcat with Peronish. And this time, the Comets stop them. Ashton Corvina and Mark Bagley right near the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down and 10. I'm seeing if Booker is on the field. Little wild, Wildcat action going on here. Ashton Corvina on the stop. His number 12 on the field is what I'm uh, looking for, the quarterback. <laughs> I don't see Jake, him out there. you see uh, Booker's out here. Yeah, he is. He's coming near side right now, so just a little bit of a change up, and he will go now from the shotgun with Peronish sidecar right, Myers in motion, and they flip it to Myers, 
trying to dance through a little opening, but he can't get very far, maybe a yard to the 32 yard line. And he's pushed back by Bagley and Raphael. Yep, Meyer. and um, Caden Koshko was in on the tackle too. Yard gain on Good the luck, play. Northern Cambria Colts from Linda Colossa. I hope I'm saying your name right, Linda. Thank you. Blairsville checking in tonight. Enjoying this game from Renda Media. Mark, thanks for the great Indiana County coverage. We appreciate that. Good luck, Northern Cambria Colts from Linda. The men's family, Washington, Con Connecticut tonight. And how about this? Class of 2003 alum watching in Honolulu. That sounds like lovely right now, doesn't it? Third down and long. Booker steps up, runs. No, he doesn't. He's sacked by Mark Bagley back outside the 35 at the 36-yard line. That'll be a loss of three, and it sets up fourth down and 13. Bagley came busting through. Penn's Manor come off the edge with uh, Max Hill and, and Carter Smith. I keep playing with all Jimmy. Uh, Carter come off the edges and forced him back up inside. And you can't, I tell you what, Mark for playing defense line and fullback, he's got great speed. You can't get, you can't run away from him. You gotta try to run at him. Only 185 pounds and the Colts are gonna try to pin them deep. Punter is Ben Janosko and he takes the snap and he does kick it. Floating kick, fair catch called for, but they allow it to bounce in Penn's Manor. Are they gonna, no, it's gonna roll dead at the one yard line. Beautiful that worked out line. beautifully for the Colts. A punt of 34 yards and no return. We're gonna step out for 30 seconds. No 7.36 remaining on an IRMC playoff sports night on the Renda Media Football Network. There are lots of choices in life. No matter what you're told, when you're hurt and need physical therapy, you have a choice. Smart people choose Mahoning Physical Therapy. Mahoning Physical Therapy has been serving the region since 1989 with experienced therapists, knowledgeable in orthopedic and lymphedema rehabilitation, and aquatic therapy. Mahoning is Medicare certified with convenient offices in Clymer and Marion Center. That's a lot of reasons to choose Mahoning Physical Therapy, accepting all major insurances. back keeper as we come back on first and 10 from the one yard line Max Hill safe call Jack. it's always safe when Max has the ball because you never know what's going to happen Jack Sharetti tackled him but good that's first down gain good. that's a win for the Comets like six yards up to the seven got coming in from all over uh, they're watching at the Indiana Elks uh, Greg Payson and Larry Costco uh, uh, cousin Lisa Schaefer Jackson and Guy are watching from home second down and four and Hill, again a keeper, and Hill has a first down up to the 13 or 14 yard line. Well, that's two and effective Hill, plays Cody, and punches them out of the shadow of their own goal line. 12, 12 yards on two plays. First down for the Comets. Yeah, they must have saw something um, at, at halftime. They were just pinching the, pinching the center's bum and going straight up the middle. Motion man is Bagley as they send him to the left boundary. And Northern Cambria shifts and Hill's gonna keep it. Hill has running room to the 15, to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, and over the 30 to the 32 yard line where he's tackled. And Hill, the ball carrier, Ty Dumb. Crossed the way by Ty Dumb, the safety. Yeah, and they're putting the ball in Max's hands right now. And if they don't start keying on him, there's going to be problems. <laughs> Plus uh, 20 on that play to the 32-yard line. Max Hill right up to date, 14 carries, 72 yards. Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Time to be first. Slot receiver Carter Smith. Marshall in motion. They hand it to Justin. Cuts it up. Gets to the 35 to the 36-yard line. On the tackle. We talked briefly about this at halftime, Mark. I like the fact the officials are letting them play the game. The best compliment you can get from, as an official is not to be noticed. Yeah, they have done a good job. Amsdale on the tackle for the Northern Cambria Colts. Second down and six. Football resting just over the Comets 36-yard line. Nice crowd on hand. 29 degrees the current temperature here at Mansion Park Stadium. Max Hill goes under center with split backs behind him, and he's going to keep it. And he dives for the 39-yard line. He got what he could on that play defensively for the 
Northern Cambria Colts. I think it was Jack Sheretti. Yep. Jack Sheretti. It'll be third down and about three to go. The football three yards on, on the left three. hash. They need to get from the 39 to the 42 third to move the chains. Three at the Bringing a line. play in from the sideline is Adam Altimus. 440 rapidly paced third quarter on Cat Country 106.3 and Renda Digital TV. Altimus, a receiver to the short side of the field. Hill goes under center with Bagley, the fullback, and Hill keeps it, and I think they're going to stop him shy of that lead chain at the 41-yard line. Although Carter Smith says he got enough, but Carter's not the official, is he? They're going to put him down a yard short Hill, of the first down. Now, Penn's Manor gambled in the first half, I think and it didn't go, go well. I think you go for it. You just keep it in Max's hands. Positive and I wouldn't try to go play. outside. They might use a timeout here. No. Ultimus coming in. Be aware of big number 78 for the Northern Cambria Colts. Uh, you got Dawson that, Schutte, you the 6'1", 255-pound nose guard, although he's lined up as a right tackle. And Max Hill under center. Nate Raphael, and there's movement. Now, you can tell by the way where the flag come down. It's got to be on Northern Cambria, Mark. Yep. Offsides. That'll Defense. give them an automatic first down. Five yard penalty. First down. They'll move the football to the 46 yard line. This drive started at the one. Restart the clock. 3.40 to play. Scoreless here in this football game in the third quarter. Penn's Banner. With double tights, motion man Marshall, they give on that uh, inside Connor to Corvina. Corvina breaks one tackle, and on his own effort, picks up a tough yard or two before they push him back. Owen Booker in there defensively, along with Dawson Schutte and others, has a lot of white jerseys swarming the football. They're not fooled. Uh, they've seen that counter so many times run by Penn's Manor, and, and Northern's really defended that well tonight, Mark. Uh, you know, for, for only weighing, and I don't think he weighs 170 pounds, but Austin is listening to lit us to that, but he runs really hard. Second down. And Hill around the left end. And Shreddy dies for him and does take him down as he gets into Colt territory at the 49-yard line. Good play by Shreddy, who came hustling across with good lateral movement and knifed down the speedy Max Hill, and it... Uh, We'll set up third down and five from the Colt 49-yard line. This Colt team, their first playoff appearance since 2019 when they were eliminated at Homer Center by a score of 24 to six. They're one and three in the playoffs under Coach Schutte. 2017, they lost to Junie out of Alley, 19 to 14. 2018, they beat Salzburg 36-34 before losing in the semifinals to United. Here's Max Hill. And Mill, Max to about the 45-yard line. He'll be stopped a yard shy of that first down, so it's going to be yet another fourth down and one for the Penns Manor Comets. And uh, very methodical right now. Jake Slobotnik, uh, Penns Manor just uh, taking what they can get. Yeah, and that's all they really can do. I mean, especially in a night like this where defense has been the name of the game. You go inch by inch, centimeter by centimeter, or I guess in this case, yard by yard. Take as much as you can get, and Penn's Manor's doing that. They're finding a little bit of a groove, letting Max Hill work and command this offense, letting his weapons do the job for him. Fourth down and a yard, a drive that started at the one-yard line. Quarterback keeper Hill, and they have enough for another first down, the Comets do. He didn't need much and he got just enough to the 43 of the Colts. This is reminiscent of the drive the drive that Penn's Manor put together last last week, Mark. Uh, they went 93 yards, I believe, to put the game on ice. Max Hill, 86 yards rushing on 19 carries. Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank. Time to be first. Empty set. Hill Direct snap around the left end to the 35, and about 10 more. We'll see where they mark him out of bounds on the far Matt side of the field. Hill. I'm carry. Going to be about three yards short, Mark. Penn's Manor with 
just 50 seconds to play in this quarter. We're scoreless, second down and two football at the 35 yard line. Hill entered the game with 1,522 yards rushing on 209 carries, so he's added close to 100 to those totals. No scoring in this football game. Plenty of mistakes in the first half on both sides. And we've had only two possessions in this third quarter. Second down and a deuce turning. Hand off to Bagley. He has a first down. Great lead block there, I believe, by Marshall. No, I'm, I'm sorry, Corvina. Football to the 31-yard line. Cody Dumb on the stop for the Northern Cambria Colts. And we're down to 35 seconds to play in this quarter. And we might be looking at the final play. 13th play of the drive that started at the one yard line. They will have to run a play. There's 15 on the play clock, 24 on the game clock. First and 10 comments at the Colts 31 yard line. Carter Smith receiver to the right along with Mark Bagley. Wingman to the right is Justin Marshall who widens it out a little bit. And here comes Max Hill being chased by Shooty. He's not gonna catch him. Max spins and Shooty, I eat those words because Shooty stayed with it and came in from behind to finish off the tackle. Max Hill, a gain of about four yards as the quarter comes to a close. Wow, only two possessions in the quarter. Penn's Manor is going to be approaching the red zone as we start the fourth, poised to maybe score the first points in this football game. After three, it's Penn's Manor nothing and the Northern Cambria Colts nothing on the Cat Country Renda Media Football Network. Robindale Energy Services is a proud supporter of high school athletics and our hometown community. To do its part for the local rural areas, Robindale Energy has been cleaning up refuse coal piles that dot the western Pennsylvania landscape. These waste piles, remnants from past decades of mining in the region, are removed and used to create affordable energy for America. Robindale Energy has helped to clean up hundreds of miles of streams and channels. In the area where the land has been restored for a while, streams have become alive again and able to support plant and fish life. For employment opportunities, contact Robindale Energy at 814-446-6700, extension 120. You can find just about any kind of home online. Starter, fixer-upper, or your dream home. Now, finding the right mortgage is just as easy. With the FNBE Store, you can explore loan options and get a great rate. Add to cart, then check out. Online or in person. From clicks to bricks, we've got you covered. Experience the FNBE store in branch, online, or on your phone today. And Paul, what a drive. Started at the one yard line. Yeah, I'd mentioned a little bit earlier, this is reminis reminiscent of the drive that Penn's Banner put together to uh, put the game away last week. Um, Got to hang on to football, though. This kind of makes you nervous, I'm sure, if you're Coach Packer. Uh, a couple times, Max was carrying that like a loaf of bread, um, going up First Street, carrying by Babe Marcenzo or something like that. Or but by Tate's Market. Yes, we thank Tate's Supermarket, one of our presenting sponsors with the Climber Slovak Club. It is Ashton Corvina bouncing it outside. Going to be stopped shy of the first down, but it'll be third down and short inside the 25 at about the 22-yard line. On the tackle, Cody Dumb once again, their leading tackler with over 160 of them coming in. They put the football down actually at the 23, so it'll be third down and deuce, uh, third down and a deuce. Tonight, Coach Packer's 200th game as the head coach. They've had 11 winning seasons in his 18 years. I'll give you a number that uh, tells you the job he did. Now Max, a little botched, uh, some mi confusion I think in the backfield, and they're going to force him out of bounds. I'm not sure if the, the ball carrier the, slipped. Maybe we'll get a replay here. Yeah, that's what happened. The ben ball carrier, the, the uh, back slip. Yeah, it was ba intended to go to Bagley, but he oh, slipped as we look at it on our replay monitor. So they back it up to the 25-yard line. It'll be fourth down and four. Just to follow up, Prior to Coach Packer taking over in 2005, Penn's Manor had losing seasons in 20 of 24 seasons dating back to 1981. When he took over, the school had suffered through 13 straight losing seasons, going a combined 23 and 95. That included three winless seasons. Coming near side, Justin Marshall. Delansky can't get him. Marshall cuts at the 20 to the 15, spun down at the 11 yard line. 
That'll be first and 10 for the Comets. Now a flag coming in late, and it might be a late hit on the Northern Cambria Colts. Yeah, I think a little frustration. You believe, you can't, I, I repeated this again, you can't touch speed. You can't teach speed, excuse me. I don't know what happened there at the end. Yeah, uh, there was a late pow on right there by that man. Personal well, on radio, that doesn't work. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to give the number because the young young men there that uh, get frustrated once in a while. So, um, so, yeah, that's exactly what happened. A little bit of frustration with uh, Justin and his speed. Late hit advances the football to the Northern Cambria five-yard line. So first and goal at the five for the Comets trying to break the deadlock here, they send Marshall as a receiver to the right boundary. Adam Altimus near side. In the slot is Corvina. And Max Hill takes the direct snap, sheds one tackle. Can't shed another, he might even lose a yard. Back to the six yard line. As Amsdale and Ty Dumb came up to make that tackle. Yeah, that's their they Max, lose a yard back to the six. Max really likes to run to the left, the and they the weren't play. fooled there at all. Ty Dumb's only a sophomore, but he is all over the field, and the Dumb la last name is familiar to Penn's Manor. There was about three of them that came through Penn's Manor. They were really good football players. I believe they're cousins. Max Hill goes under center with Bagley, the fullback. He sends Corvina in motion, and he hands it to Ashton. Ashton to the five, to the three, to the goal line. A touchdown for the Penn's Manor Comets. A 99-yard drive as they flash the lights here at Mansion Park in Altoona as the Comets celebrate the first touchdown of the game and they lead 6 to nothing with 10.06 remaining in the football game. We better stop celebrating and get out there for the extra point. These extra points are important, Mark. I've talked to this with Todd throughout the course of the year. Obviously, it hasn't hurt Penn's Manor, but you've got to convert these. It is the uh, kicker, Colton Shields. He's 20 of 26 this season. And now a whistle, and I'm not sure what the delay is. Long snapper, normally Carter Smith. Let's see if we can spot if it is Carter. And they're going to come near sideline and... Uh, Different holder. Oh, Max didn't have his mouthpiece in, so he has to come out of the game. So the backup holder, we'll see how Troy Williams does here. Cold off the bench for sure. Right-footed soccer-style kicker, Colton Shields, out of the hold of Williams. And the snap is put down by Williams, and the kick is partially blocked and falls short. No good. So we'll see how that affects things as we move forward. But we do have a score. Ashton Corvina's six-yard touchdown run gives Penn's Manor the lead with 10.06 remaining in the game on an IRMC Championship Sports Night. It's Penn's Manor 6 and the Northern Cambria Colts nothing on the Renda Media Football Network. The Climber Slovak Club is a proud supporter of Penn's Manor Athletics and wishes the Comets the best of luck in the playoffs. The Slovak Club opens seven days a week with daily specials, including Tuesday Pasta Night, Taco Wednesdays, Thursday is their famous wing night, and Friday is Peel and Eat Shrimp. Reminder, November 23rd, All You Can Eat Taco Bar, and December 10th is the Members' Christmas Party. Bar Bingo every Sunday starting at 6, 100% payout. The club is always accepting new members and is now in a membership special. So just stop on by and join the best club in the area. Business happens here, and here, and here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. Hello, this is John Lefkoll, owner and director of the John A. Lefkoll Funeral Home, wishing our Penn's Manor Comets much success in the upcoming playoffs. It's always an awesome feeling to achieve success, be it in business or sports. You as players have made our community proud. To be a winner, it takes much dedication, time, and preparation. Give it 100% years from now, you will look back with fond memories of what you have accomplished. Go get them, Comets. We at the Lefkoll Funeral Home are behind you 100%. 
At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So, there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Team plays 99 yards, took 9 minutes 32 seconds, 6 first downs, 1 for 3 on 3rd down, 3 for 3 on 4th down. Amazing. Yeah, that's, that's what championships are made of there, Mark. Uh, when you put together a drive like that, that's for sure. Jerry does an awesome job at those stats, too. Man. Jerry, his limo, they're warming it up. He has his own sponsor. He has his own first Commonwealth garb. It's amazing. <laughs> Justin Marshall, squib kick, taken on a big hop at the 33-yard line. And with the football for the Northern Cambria Colts, it was Cody Dumb on the return. And they're going to be set up with pretty good field position now trailing 6 to nothing in this football game. They're going to put the football down at the Colts 46 yard line. Dumb in the return and got a bunch of texts coming in and emails and the whole nine yards mark. If we don't get to you out there, we're sorry. Uh, I have to say hi to my mother though, that's for sure. She cooked a great dinner this afternoon for us. Colts at their own 46, ball right in the center of the field. We'll get a few in here in a moment. Huge listening and watch uh, viewing audience tonight and Tackling the quarterback, Owen Booker, for a one-yard loss. Back Let's Hill. see. Looks Ooh. like busted through the hill. Okay. Yeah, they looked like they tried to run a little option this way, Mark, and uh, the pitch man got out in front of the quarterback, and, and Max wasn't fooled at all. Yep. One-yard loss. Under 10 minutes to play in the game. 6-0 Penn's Manor. Booker from the gun has a sidecar Peronish to his left. Trips to the left, and Booker looking to pass. Under throws his intended receiver, Ty Dumb. Coverage by Penn's Manor's Eric Baum. Third down. It'll be third down and 11. Polenic providing pressure up the middle. Watching from Scottsdale, Arizona, Bill Rogers, class of 74, says undefeated. Polenic family watching from 72. Clymer. Watching in Plumville, some fans. Bill from San Diego, California, class of 2001. Third down and 11. And Booker throwing deep for Dumb. And he makes the catch as a flag comes in, too. We're going to see. Offensive. We're going to see, and yep, if the penalty the goes against Penn's Manor's bomb or offensive on Ty Dumb. We get a replay. We'll take a look at it here in a moment on our replay monitor here it is Paul here and little jostling I didn't see much there to be honest with you it's pass interference on Penn's Manor so I think could have been a good non-call definitely as I saw the replay was not offensive no it could have went either way I think Mark uh, that's the first major penalty we've seen tonight besides the late hit and that didn't cost them. 37 yard pass to Dumb now they're in the red zone. The Colts are at the 18-yard line. Booker, shotgun snap, throws for the end zone for Dom. Jump ball, caught it, touchdown, Northern Cambria Colts. And they've tied the game up 6-6. What a heck of a football game we have going on here at Mansion Park as they answer 54 yards, lightning quick. The ground attack of Penn's Manor, the aerial attack of Owen Booker, his 21st touchdown pass of the season and for Ty Dumb that's number 10 we're knotted up at six great through but great throw by Bookner right on the money put it only where his guy could get it perfect pass now to attempt the extra point all important it is Trey Pershing 19 of 24 and the kick is blocked both teams have blocked extra points I think that was Marshall it might have been Nathan Raphael too we're gonna find out we're going to take a break. We'll see if we get a replay when we come back from break, but we're knotted up at six. What a football game. This is what championship games are meant to be. 
9.03 remaining on an IRMC playoff sports night. It's Penn's Manor 6. Colts come right, bo- uh, right back at the Comets. They have 6 on the Renda Media Football Network. Hi, this is George Tate of Tate Supermarket and Climber, established in 1906. And ever since, it's been our family's mission to be the best community grocery store that we can be. It's been so gratifying that the people of Indiana County have voted Tate's Supermarket as the best grocer in Indiana County. We are so grateful and have always strived to live up to our motto that the most important item in our store has always been you, the customer. Thanks again from Tate's Supermarket in Clymer, Pennsylvania. Checking accounts look a little different these days, and Marion Center Bank can help you customize your account with features like credit and identity theft monitoring, cash back on debit card purchases, plus travel and shopping discounts. For teens and young adults, a student checking with mobile banking options. Pay friends and family with our newest person-to-person payment solution, Zelle. Marion Center Bank, a small-town bank with big bank technology. Stop in or call a local branch today or visit MarionCenterBank.com. Marion Center Bank, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Summary, three plays, 54 yards. It took 58 seconds. Two catches for Ty Dump for 55 yards. Squib kick, and it gets by Marshall, picks it up. Bobbles it, gets it back, now gives Grom back near the 20-yard line where he's swarmed under by Logan Dumb. The momentum has shifted again, Mark. Here's the extra point again. We'll see if it was Nate Raphael. I believe it was Nathan. Here it is here, the holder, Booker, Pershing, extra point as we look at it on our replay monitor. And... Yeah, I think it was 55. Big Nate. Nate Duck. Raphael. Yeah. 8.57 remaining. We're tied to six. Penn's Manor starting at their own 21-yard line out of the shotgun. Max Hill hands it off to Corvina. Corvina goes down. Dawson Schutte on the tackle for the Northern Cambria Colts. He's had a Jeff heck of a Marshall. football game. These linebackers are tough from the northern, tough that's for sure. Dawson. Shooty, that nose guard. They line them up at tackle. They move them around. They do a lot of shifting on their defensive front. Shooty, a junior, 6'1", 255. They're going to lose a yard back to the 20-yard line. Comets come out with a slot receiver, Carter Smith. Bagley out here as well at the bottom of uh, your screen if you're watching. Nate Hill, or uh, Max Hill coming. Has a no flag, and Max up the sideline to the 40, the 50. There is a flag down, and he's going to take it to the house, but it's going to come back. I see the flag now at the 18-yard line, and it's going to wipe off an 80-yard touchdown run for Hill. You saw it right away, didn't you? Yeah, I saw the hold, and I saw Max slow down, so he's seen it too. Let's see if we get a... Replay, I want to say hello to Heritage Conference President Jody Rainey. We won't have a replay on that hold. Jody, also with the Cherry Hill Fire Department, was part of the big send-off for Penn's Manor. Hats off to the folks in Northern Holy Camry. They had a big offense, send-off, too. Number 55. Penalty is Led the, the Comets out of town, and replay. the Fire Department Second and the down. police in Northern Camry did the same thing. So much excitement in both communities. So great to see. That's the first time I've ever heard a high school coach, uh, referee announce who the hold was on. I, I think he must do college ball. That's the reason why he did that. Well, I don't have a big problem with it, and those guys know that it's, yeah. not, it's not T-ball. No, nope, not anymore. Well, long second down here, Mark. Penalty backs it up to the nine yard line. They need the 31 for a first down, so it's second and 22. Max Hill out of the gun, has a protector in there and he's looking to pass and he, now he's gonna keep it, he, a little pump fake and Northern Cambria stops him but not before he gets up near the 20 yard line. I think that was just a little pump fake. I'd like to maybe get another view of that in our, uh, on the Renda Digital TV side as they put the football down at the 19, so it'll be a gain of nine. There was some, pocket was collapsing, and I don't know if it was a pump fake or not. Max Hill, 105 yards rushing on 24 carries. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, it was a little pump fake. 
pocket collapsed. Amsdale came up the middle, and Max just ran away from a couple of defenders and broke a tackle and got up to the 19-yard line before he was forced out of bounds by Caleb Dolney. Big third down both ways here, Mark. Yep, third down and a timeout going to be called by Penn's Manor. 7.59 remaining in the football game. What a dandy it's been from Mansion Park in El Tuna. Our coverage continues with the score. Penn's Manor 6, Northern Cambria 6. Big third down coming up for Penn's Manor when we return on the Cat Country Renda Media Football Network. Jeez, I keep forgetting about you, Jake, down there. We're trying to get you after the break here, Jake. All right. Two, two thirties, two thirties. Every moment. And 12, Max Hill gonna keep it. Can't get by Piranha. She's gonna be tackled for a loss back at the 18 yard line. Right in front of our sideline reporter, Jake Slobotnik, Jake Piranish. One of the linebackers did an outstanding job. Absolutely, and Peronish not only a threat on offense tonight, he's a threat on defense, snuffing out the rushing attempt by Max Hill. But that kind of contradicts what I was going to talk about, and that's really both teams were starting to resort to their strengths. Northern Cambry through the air, and Penn's Manor on the ground. I think uh, we're going to see more of the aerial attack from Northern Cambria coming up. Marshall to punt, gets away a pretty good one. Fair catch called for by Dumb. Ty Dum at the 47 yard line, a punt of 35 yards and no return. Yeah, I, I think maybe uh, Carter snapped that ball, Mark, so his shoulder must be feeling better. Punt, no return. So 7-17 remaining in the football game and the Northern Cambria Colts will start off virtually at the same spot that they started their touchdown drive on their last possession plus one yard their touchdown drive started at the 46 this drive starts at the 47. seven minutes this has been a great game it's a shame that someone will eventually lose this game mark so both teams have fought really hard winner will play the canton warriors next weekend somewhere either at penn's manor or central cambria Penn's Manor would be at home if they can pull it out. We're tied at six. Booker sets up the screen to Myers. He can't elude Raphael, and then Marshall comes in and finishes him off. No gain on that play. Penn's Manor stayed home. Nathan sniffed that out really well. Uh, I think that was part of a design defensive play call by Penn's Manor. They brought everybody but Nathan off the nose and let him come out and watch for the screen pass. Nice crowd on hand here at Mansion Park Stadium in Altoona, and we have uh, several thousand watching tonight, we're told. Second down and 10 to go. Sidecar to the left is Peronish, and Booker takes the shotgun snap, stands tall in the pocket, fires for Myers, has him at the 35 to the 30. Corvina tackles him, but not before he gets to the 26-yard line. Also in on that tackle, Eric Baum, that first down brought to you by First National Bank from That's Clicks to Bricks. They have you covered. Experience the FNB E-Store. Branches in Clymer and Northern Cambria. They wish the Colts and Comets the best of luck tonight. We're tied at six. First and 10 at the Comet 46 yard line. That play covering 27 yards. Myers is a handful. Heck of a receiver and now Penn's Manor I think jumped offside. Yeah, you're right. You're correct, Mark. And we said one of the keys was that Penn's Manor could stop the seam, ball. the ball off the seam of the field. Defense, and, number seven. Uh, Northern Under Cambria penalty. didn't throw it until right there. Carter Smith jumped the count. 
Peyton Myers entered tonight's game with 57 receptions for 982 yards, a 17.2 average, and 10 touchdowns. He's now over 1,000 yards receiving this season. He is a heck of an athlete, a senior 5'9", 165. Right now, first and five for the Colts. Ball on the right hash, wide side of the field toward the Northern Cambria bench. And a little inside handoff, and Delansky going to gain a couple from one side of the 20 to the other. Good defense from the Penns Manor Comets. I think it was Alex Polenik and also Peyton Koshko. Yep, yep. Nice defense staying at home by Penns Manor there. They showed everything going to the left. Came back at that inside handoff. Second and two after 19. Second down and three to go at the 19-yard line. They need the 16 of the Comets. Empty set, and the quarterback, Booker, keeps it, has a first down, cuts it at the 10 to the 5. They jersey tackle him down to the one-yard line. Mark Bagley finally dragged him down. He almost dragged oh, him into the end zone. Carry. And it's going to be first and goal with 5.07 remaining in the football game for Northern Cambria. Couple great play calls by Northern Cambria there, Mark. First and 10. That was a third and three from the 19, so an 18-yard gain for Myers. Myers has the good arm. He can hurt you with his legs, too. 407 yards rushing coming into the game. The center, Braden Palace, and the shotgun snap, it is Myers. And Myers hands it off to Peronish. Not going to get there. Ashton Corvina tried stripping it. Couldn't do that as Colton Peronish hung on to the football. He might lose a half yard. Back to the one and a half yard line. Uh, yep, and then leave, but he was in the, <coughs> in the backfield. Snap. No gain on the play. Got to hang on to the football. The You're right, Mark. Uh, Austin was trying to strip the ball there. So they put it just outside the one. The Altoona logo in the end zone if you're watching. Penn's Manor crowds the line of scrimmage on second and goal at the one. They hand it, oh, they fumble the football. Let's see who has it. I think maybe the quarterback, Booker, jumped on it back at the three yard yep. line. Yep. Yeah, he jumped back on top of it. Looks like Penn's Manor had a crack at it. He tried, I think he tried to pull the ball back Five out off the, after, after the handoff there, Mark, and uh, the running back tried to keep it. Three <laughs> at the three. Second, or third down and goal at the three yard line. They are certainly in field goal range. It's an extra point right now, although it would be a tough angle. Peronish sidecar to the right. They have trips to the left. And Booker takes the snap, throws out of the flat to tie down, touchdown. Well designed play. And the Northern Cambria Colts score for the second time in as many possessions. And they have the lead in this football game with 3.03 remaining. It's 12 6 Colts. Well done, Northern Cambria. Booker's 22nd touchdown pass of the season. And for Dumb, his second of the night. And it's 12 6. Yeah, North Ca Northern Cambria did a great job with their play calling on that drive, Mark. Uh, they had Penn's Manor back on their heels. It looked like they were going to stop them, but couldn't come up with it. They had strong influence to the left, but came to the short side. They're going to go for two here, and they empty the backfield. Trips to the right, twins up top, and Owen Booker awaits the shotgun snap from Palace. He takes it. He throws a slant in, and it is knocked away incomplete by Max Hill. Great defense there by Max. So, by Max. so oh, what a ball game. It is a heck of a ball game. 3.03 remaining in the football game. The Colts have answered Penn's Manor's score with two of their own, and they now have the lead on an IRMC playoff sports night. It's Northern Cambria 12, Penn's Manor 6 on the Cat Country Renda Media Football Network. Yep, two. Th Tulick Valley Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning wishes the Comets all the best in tonight's game. Tulick Valley Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning congratulates the coaches and players for all their hard work and dedication and for all the excitement these high school athletes bring to the community. 
And for fast, reliable, and professional plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service, call Two Lake Valley Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning in Alberta or online at Two Lake Valley Plumbing and Heating.com. You can find just about any kind of home online. Starter, fixer-upper, or your dream home. Now, finding the right mortgage is just as easy. With the FNB eStore, you can explore loan options and get a great rate. Add to cart, then check out. Online or in person. From clicks to bricks, we've got you covered. Experience the FNB eStore in branch, online, or on your phone today. Looking for one of the coolest new products in the market or maybe looking for that unique Christmas present? Psst, it will cure your pain at the pump. SeaWorld Satellites is now offering the Go Express e-bike, made for the urban commuter and weekend adventure. Combining city cruising and all-terrain riding, from pavement to hills, streets to sand, take your Go Express bike to your next meeting or exploration. This e-bike can run up to 18 miles in electric mode. To look at or take a test ride, come to SeaWorld Satellites on Wayne Avenue in Indiana. Credit to drives 154 yards. That one 53. We'll recap it here in a moment. Penn's Manor awaits the kickoff from Pershing. It's a little squibber and it's taken at the 34 yard line by Marshall, who's tackled by Peyton Myers and also on the kick coverage team for Northern Cambria. Might have been Logan Dumb across the way. So with 258 remaining, season now on the line for Penn's Manor. Todd, or uh, Todd, Paul, they'll start at the 37-yard line. Yeah, Penn's Manor moved Marshall over. There. They've been kicking, Northern Cambria kicked three times for the same spot, so they put Marshall over there trying to get a big return. We'll get down to Jake Slobotnik after this play. Direct snap, Max Hill comes near side to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, and just like that, they are, might even be in Colts territory. Going to be a third 13-yard gain. Ty Dumb on the carry. Jake, down to you. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm impressed with how both teams have carried themselves throughout the game. We have two minutes, 51 seconds left in this D6 championship game, barring any ties. But I'm just really impressed with the resiliency that both have showed. Northern Cambria especially. They fell behind early on in the second half. And since then, they have come back to lead at 12-6. to This is one that's going to be remembered for a while. From midfield to give to Corvina. Corvina sidesteps uh, his way into Colts territory for a gain of a yard. Dawson Schutte again sliding down that line. He's had a big game tonight. That drive summary, Luther Ford drive summary, and we may have an injury too. Uh, six plays, 53 yards. It took four minutes and 14 seconds. Booker, the 18-yard run to the one-yard line, set it up, took them three plays from there. And somebody's down on their uh, back for the Penns Manor Comets, it's Ashton Corvina. So an injury timeout, we're gonna take a timeout as well with 2.37 remaining. It's been quite a game. We'll see if Penns Manor now can answer Northern Cambria. Right now it's the Colts with the upper hand looking for their first ever District 6 championship. We'll see if they can pull it off when we return on the Cat Country Renda Media Football Network. Any fan will tell you the thrill is in the playoffs. Get ready for exciting high school playoff action, college and NFL football, and make your first stop Alley Cat Beverage. Whether you're hanging out before, after, or during the games, Alley Cat Beverage has all your traditional beverages and the newest flavors, your favorite brands and novelties, including slushies and popsicles. Stop in and see the cool cat in town. Back in the alley where all the cool cats go. Alley Cat Beverage and Climber. Go Comets. Alley Cat. Hi, this is George Tate of Tate Supermarket and Climber, established in 1906. And ever since, it's been our family's mission to be the best community grocery store that we can be. It's been so gratifying that the people of Indiana County have voted Tate Supermarket as the best grocer in Indiana County. We are so grateful and have always strived to live up to our motto that the most important item in our store has always been you, the customer. Thanks again from Tate Supermarket in Climber, Pennsylvania. Tuna, Corvina off the field, but limping near sideline. Who came in, Paul? I, I believe that uh, Caden Dentweiler and they're gonna put uh, Smith in the backfield. And right now it's an empty backfield and Max Hill goes under center. 
and they fake it to Marshall, and Max wants to keep it. Penn, or Northern Cambria has it snuffed out. Peyton Myers tackles Hill. The ball comes Hill. loose, but he was down. Yeah. Proper call by the officials. Myers. Peyton Myers doing it on both sides of the ball, and now Penn's men are in a desperate situation. They'll be under two minutes when they snap the football, and they're behind the chains. It's loss of five, third a loss of five, and third 14. down and 14 to go. Comets at their own 46-yard line, and they're not really built to pass a lot. They, have, they tried that naked boot leg, and uh, Northern didn't bite. Trips to the right for the Comets. Third down and 14. Max Hill, the senior, takes the snap. Steps up in the pocket. He's tripped up by the linebacker, Ben Janosko. And now Penn's Manor may be with two timeouts remaining down to their final play of what could be the season. Yeah, great great play there, tripping Max up. He had a lot of running room in front of him if he doesn't trip him up. Big players come up big, and big time in big games. Listen to the crowd. And a timeout going to be called by Penn's Manor. We'll take one with them. 114 remaining in the game on an Indiana Regional Medical Center playoff sports night. We'll pause for 30 seconds. Do or die for the Comets when we return. The Colts hoping to raise their first ever championship trophy on the carpet at Mansion Park. It's 12 6 Northern Cambria on the Cat Country Renda Media Football Network. Sleppy Chiropractic Family Wellness Center would like to take the opportunity to welcome Dr. Evan Ludwig to our family. Dr. Ludwig is a graduate of Northern Cambria High School and a 2021 graduate of New York Chiropractic College. Sleppy Chiropractic offers services in chiropractic care, sports injuries, disc injuries, orthotic casting, decompression, robotic cold laser therapy, and a complete line of nutritional products. Call 724-357-9030 or visit Sleppy.net. Proud supporter of Heritage Conference Athletics. In our broadcast booth, our ST Bank broadcast booth, Relationship Banking, one customer at a time, one play for both teams here. Paul, for Penn's Manor, it's do or die, and if Northern Cambria can get a hold here, they're going to win a championship. Austin's back out in the field. Jake Austin. Slobotnik down on the sideline, a lot of excitement, crowd fired up. Absolutely, on the opposite side of the field, Northern Cambria is going nuts because well, Penn's Manor needs 16 yards for the first to keep their season alive. Northern Cambria needs a stop to claim their first ever District 6 championship. From the shotgun, Max Hill boots to his right. Dances now away from pressure. Throws on the run and it's knocked away. Incomplete Ethan Donatelli on the coverage of Ashton Corvina and the Northern Cambria Colts take over with 106 remaining. It looks like they're gonna win this football game. Yeah, uh, Penn's Manor has one timeout left. They got to run one play, uh, and then kneel on the ball. They, Penn's Manor can't stop the clock. Penn's Manor's taking some of their uh, young men. Oh, the offense for defense, and Corvina's limping off the field now. So Northern Cambria, after falling behind, six nothing. Back-to-back -back scoring drives of 54 and 53 yards, and now they can go into victory formation. Penn's men are only one timeout remaining. We'll have post-game reaction with Jake Slobotnik with both coaches and also players as taking a knee is Owen Booker. I don't think Coach Packers, yeah, he used his timeout. So they do take a timeout. We'll keep it here with 59 seconds remaining. Timeout. So Sam Schutte in his seventh five. season, sixth season, going to win a championship. He was a 98 graduate of Northern Cambria. He was the Colts junior high coach when they played in their only other District 6 championship back in 2003. They lost that football game to Bishop Carroll, 49-14. to Shooty was a heck of a running back at Northern Cambria. He rushed for nearly 1,000 yards in his junior season and was off to a great start in his senior year with nearly 700 yards, but he suffered a season-ending injury. Tried coming back in the season finale, he told me uh, a few months ago, but that did not go well. But this is going very well. The city of Northern Cambria, the merger of Barnesboro and Spangler, they're going to be celebrating a championship victory.
as Owen Booker under his center. Braden Palace takes a knee, and they'll have to do that one more time, and we will have a final. 12-6 our score, Northern Cambria. Jake uh, stunned the sideline, I'm sure, on the Penns Manor sideline where you stand. Yeah, you could hear a needle drop on this side of the sideline. Penns Manor, an obvious disbelief. Uh, and, and it's heartbreaking, really, because this has been a season of triumph for the most part. The Heritage Conference title, they carried an undefeated season well into the playoffs. Um, really, it was, it's, it's been the Comet season, but this is exactly why you can't put all your chips into one game. you got to come in as a 0-0 record. All right, Jake Slobotnik will have a lot of post-game reaction. Final 10 seconds. Tip. Ticking off the clock. They say it's difficult to beat a team twice in one season. That holds true certainly tonight. As the Northern Cambria Colts avenge a 40 to 14 setback back on September 30th, they win the District 6 Class A Championship here tonight at Mansion Park in Altoona. Our final score, the Northern Cambria Colts 12 and the Penns Manor Comets 6. Stay with us for our first Commonwealth Bank post-game show. We'll have plenty of reaction. We'll recap that exciting fourth quarter for you as well. Congratulations, Colts. You are the 2022 District 6 Class A Championship post-game show next on the Cat Country Renda Media Football Network. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. So what sets s and apart from other financial institutions is that they are visionary. Now, we understand that it is partially about the numbers, but they know it's not just about the numbers. It's about the management team, it's about the strategic and business plan, it's about how the team is going to execute on that. In short, s and gets it. Quite honestly, we couldn't have done it without s and The team at Smith Colon Oil knows how hard work and dedication pay off. Tonight's athletes and coaches have done their communities proud, and Smith Colon Oil is pleased to be a sponsor of this great matchup. Good luck to all the athletes tonight and the rest of the season. Speaking of seasons, the weather is turning cooler. Need coal, heating oil, or propane? Give the team at Smith a call, and don't let fall and winter catch you by surprise. Smith Colon Oil in Northern Cambria, 814-948-4708. Any fan will tell you the thrill is in the playoffs. Get ready for exciting high school playoff action, college and NFL football, and make your first stop Alley Cat Beverage. Whether you're hanging out before, after, or during the games, Alley Cat Beverage has all your traditional beverages and the newest flavors, your favorite brands and novelties, including slushies and popsicles. Stop in and see the cool cat in town. Back in the alley, where all the cool cats go. Alley Cat Beverage and Climber. Go Comets. Alley Cat. The Dixonville Moose on Route 403 Highway North between Clymer and Dixonville is a strong supporter of local youth, high school student athletes, and organizations, and is proud to be a sponsor of tonight's big matchup. The Moose Lodge is currently in a membership campaign until the end of November. All military veterans who apply for a new membership will receive their second year's dues for free. For more information on events, check them out on Facebook or go to beamoose.org. The Dixonville Moose, voted 2022 Best Bar or Pub. Hi, this is George Tate of Tate Supermarket and Climber, established in 1906. And ever since, it's been our family's mission to be the best community grocery store that we can be. It's been so gratifying that the people of Indiana County have voted Tate Supermarket as the best grocer in Indiana County. We are so grateful and have always strived to live up to our motto that the most important item in our store has always been you, the customer. Thanks again from Tate Supermarket in Climber, Pennsylvania.
With Paul Tatarko and Jake Slobotnik, I'm Mark Burdick. Final score here tonight, Northern Cambria wins the District 6 Class A title, 12 to 6 over the Penns Manor Comets. The Comets season comes crashing to a close at 11 and 2. The Northern Cambria Colts are now 10 and 3, and they will get set to face the Canton Warriors, and how ironic Paul, it might be at Penn's Manor's Pack yeah. Oregon Field. Sure, yeah, that would, that'd be kind of a slap in the face, wouldn't it? But I'm sure that Penn's Manor's boys, I was watching after the game, it was great sportsmanship, too. Those those two schools are so close together, and it, it's such a rivalry. I, I've seen some things on social media going back and forth, and more teasing than anything. But a great show of respect between two both teams. We're going to have comments from both coaches. Northern Camry Colts receiving their championship medals. We can tell you that after a mistake uh, filled first half, the team slugged it out uh, scoreless heading to the third quarter, and Penn's Manor started the third quarter at their own, late in the third quarter, they started a drive at their own one yard line after a 34 yard punt from Northern Cambria. And it was the Max Hill show. He punched it out with runs of six and seven to the 12 yard line. He ran 20 yards to the Penns Manor 32. On a fourth and one, Northern Cambria was offside. Had a first down to the 46 yard line. On another fourth and one, Hill ran two yards to Northern Cambria's 43. And he ran uh, to the Northern Cambria 27 yard line as the third quarter came to a close. We started the fourth quarter, fourth and four, they were faced uh, with the uh, Comets at the Northern Cambria 27. Justin Marshall ran 11 yards uh, to the Northern Cambria 11-yard line. A late hit advanced the football. Actually, it would have been a run of 16 yards to the 11. A late hit advanced it to the 5. Hill lost a yard on first and goal. And then Ashton Corvina scored a touchdown from six yards out, an 18-play, 99-yard drive. It was 6-0. The extra point was blocked. 10.06 remaining in the football game. But Northern Cambria came bouncing back. Paul, keep an eye on Jake and Coach Packer down there. You can let me know. Northern Cambria started at their own 46-yard line, took them just three plays, a 37-yard pass to Ty Dumb to the Penns Manor 18-yard line, very next play, 18-yard touchdown pass to Ty Dumb. Trey, Trey Pershing's extra point kick was blocked. We were tied as they scored one minute and three seconds later to tie it at 6-6. Penn's Manor was then held. A, they did have an 80-yard touchdown run by Max Hill, wiped off on an obvious holding penalty, and they couldn't recover. They ended up punting the ball. Northern Cambria started after a 35-yard punt. At the 47-yard line, they got a 27-yard pass to Peyton Myers to the Penns Manor 26-yard line. An 18-yard rush from quarterback Owen Booker set up first and goal at the one. Peronish was stopped for a yard loss on first down. Second and goal, scary moment for the Colts, a fumble. But quarterback Owen Booker recovered his own fumble. And then third and goal, he went to tie Dumb for the second time on a three-yard touchdown pass to give it, uh, the Colts a 12-6 lead. The pass for two fell, but 3.03 remaining in the game. And uh, Penn's Manor had one final shot. Started off well enough at their own 37 <coughs> with 2.58 remaining. But uh, Hill, a 13-yard run to the 50-yard line in his final game of his spectacular career. Max Hill over 100 yards rushing tonight, but the four subsequent plays lost six yards and time ran out on the Penns Manor Comets. Head uh, coach Bill Packer standing by with our Jake Slobotnik down on the field. I'm sure he's very disappointed, but a season to remember for the Comets. Jake, down to you. Mark, thanks so much, Coach. Very heartbreaking loss, 12 to 6. But um, really, it was a hard-fought battle throughout the entire game. Just a couple misplays in the fourth quarter led to a uh, 12-6 loss. But in, you know, in so many words, it's, it was a good game. Yeah, it was. Uh, you know, they came out, and, and we knew it was going to be a tough battle. And, and uh, you know, they, they made the big plays when it came down to it. They had a couple big pass plays at the end, and, and that was the key to it. Uh, I thought thought we shut down the run real well, and uh, 
a couple big passes from them. Uh, besides that, I thought our defense played pretty well, except for uh, a couple plays there in the fourth quarter. That's what I was thinking throughout the entire game, is that defense was really a big factor for you guys. Um, offense, too, but, you know, defense held Northern Cambria in check throughout the majority of the, of the game, and, you know, that speaks to just how well this team was prepared coming onto the field tonight in cold conditions, and you guys still played lights out. Yeah, I'm proud of the kids defensively. They did a nice job. Offensively, we just had too many turnovers, and, uh, you know, I don't know what happened a couple times. We fumbled the ball a lot. A couple of big penalties that killed us, especially the one, one where Max had that big run for us. And uh, just uh, you can't have penalties. You can't make mistakes against a good team, and that's what happened. They, they, had, they had the big plays on us. Not the greatest ending to the season, but still a great season for you guys overall. You carried an undefeated record throughout the most of the season. You guys really dominated the Heritage Conference and really left your impact on the season. In so many words, talk about how well of a season this has been for the Pence Manor School District. Oh, I, you know, I'm just so proud because uh, I wasn't sure what kind of, really what kind of team we were going to have this year, only winning three or four games last year. And uh, the bounce back and for the hard work these kids did in the off season, uh, that senior group, those eight seniors, they just did a great job for us getting these other younger kids out there and uh, working hard in the off season. And uh, I'm just proud of them. You know, I can't say anything negative. Uh, they played hard and, uh, you know, 11 wins. I never thought that, uh, in the uh, beginning of the year, I never thought that was going to be, but uh, again, I'm proud of them. Great season overall, Coach. Well, uh, take this back to the drawing board and regroup for next season, and let's try to replicate it next year, all right? Thanks a lot, Jake. We'll do that. Coach Bill Packer of the Penns Manor comments his team falling 12-6. to Send it back up to you guys while I flag down some Colts in Coach Sam Schutte. All right, thank you, Jake. And our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show will continue with reaction from the Northern Cambria Colts. Colts claim their first ever District 6 Class A championship or District 6 championship in any class. 12-6, they end the Penns Manor Comets season. Colt reaction coming up next on the Cat Country Renda Media Football Network. Hello, this is John Lefgall, owner and director of the John A. Lefgall Funeral Home, wishing our Penns Manor Comets much success in the upcoming playoffs. It's always an awesome feeling to achieve success, be it in business or sports. You as players have made our community proud. To be a winner, it takes much dedication, time, and preparation. Give it 100% years from now, you will look back with fond memories of what you have accomplished. Go get them, Comets. We at the Lefgall Funeral Home are behind you 100%. For over 50 years, Diamond Drug Store and Diamond Medical Supply have helped the people of Indiana to live a most wonderful life. From the advice and expertise of our trusted pharmacists and respiratory therapists to the friendly and personal service of our store staff, we've worked hard to make our community healthier and happier. As Indiana kicks off the holiday season, we can't help but feel grateful to serve this very special community and continue to call it home. From all of us at Diamond, we'd like to wish you a very happy and most importantly, a very healthy holiday season. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Penn's Manor Comets in come from behind fashion. All of the scoring in this football game in the fourth quarter. And Jake Slobotnik will start our Colt reaction on the first Commonwealth Bank post game show. He has four of the many standouts on the Northern Cambrius uh, sideline. He's flanked two on each side. Jake, we'll send it back down to you. Yeah, you talk about the standouts in this game, Mark. And honestly, we could interview the entire team, but I. 
I, I think 28 degrees. I think everyone wants to get into the locker room and warm up a little bit. But joining me right here, Dawson Schutte and uh, Owen Booker to my right, to my left, Peyton Myers and Ty Dumb, all of which had a fantastic game. Owen, i got to start with you. Those two drives, you guys come back after falling down 6 to nothing to Penn's Manor. I, I just got to ask, you know, what kept you guys motivated? And, you know, and what did you see in the Penn's Manor defense in order to come out on, uh, on top? I mean, all the hard work we've been putting uh, throughout the summer and throughout the season, we knew like it was big time and we had to get a drive on and try to put one in the end zone. And I saw Ty two times in the deep down the field and threw it up to him and he came down with it. Your receiving core has really complimented you a lot throughout the season. Uh, you know, Peyton and Ty are just two of them, but really it was a whole complete effort. You know, talk about, you know, the chemistry that, you know, how important the chemistry is between you and your receivers to make sure you guys are well. I mean, it's great. If a team tries to key on one of them, all of them are athletic enough to be able to beat a lot of teams. And I think they're all just really good receivers and help me out a lot. Let's go with uh, Dawson shooting now. Dawson, uh, I'm just going to cross over here real quick. Uh, one of the things we talked about in the pregame show was penetrating that offensive line for Penn's Manor and getting to the backfield and forcing Max Hill and his crew to, you know, adjust on the fly, forcing you guys to really uh, get them in the backfield and come down with key losses, which helped you guys tonight. Uh, was that one of the f key focal points, or what did you guys do to adjust? Yeah, it, judged, it adjusted a lot. Also, we had our outside run game, which also helped. And it also helps having the three outside our three backers that really can make a key and make a spotlight on themselves to help the line get through. It's a lot of key eff efforts, and we just played together and got through, contained the outside. I got to ask, this, was, this comes after a dominant performance against Cambry Heights last week in which the defense helped shut them out. Uh, did that play a factor in help motivating you guys this week? I think it definitely did since we got down. It was a good game between them last time, and it went to a zero score, which really got us confident in our defense and got a lot more trust in each other to contain and to get through. I think it really helped us get in and be confident in our team to stop the ball. I'm going to switch over here. Thanks, Dawson. And I'm going to sh uh, shift over here to Peyton Myers. Peyton, it's been a season to remember for you, uh, surpassing the 1,000 uh, receiving yard mark obviously a district title that's got to feel good for you oh it feels amazing right now all the hard work we put as a team this year it's finally paying off and you talk about the leadership you know Sam Schutte he, he's a Northern Cambria alum and that sort of helped you guys how, how great of a motivator is he and the coaching staff been to keep you guys in the game oh they're great motivators most of them went to school here so they know what we're going through day in, day in and day out so they're just great at keeping our, like, our will up we you know it's cool they keep us energized they keep the practices like, energetic just great you and Ty are two of the key receivers for Owen Booker right here, and that helps you guys. You know, you guys have one of the most dominant quarterback receiving core connections in the league. Uh, just ha talk about your connection with Booker and how well you guys have really grown throughout the program to establish such a, a, a dominant connection. I think our, our like off the field chemistry is helping us a lot. We're all friends here, so I think like us hanging out is making us something closer. We're in and out meet the practice. We're seeing our keys. Like okay. We're good. Like, Ty's good at going deep. I'm good at like going out. Like we know we're we know what we're good at now. Thanks, Peyton. I'm gonna cross over to Ty right now. And Ty, you are on the receiving end, literally, of the two touchdowns. One that tied the game, and one that won the game. How great of a moment! How great of moments were they? It, it was amazing. I, it's this is what you live up for, and all the practice we put in and stuff. This is what this is all for. This moment right here. In the preseason, you know, you fantasize a lot about being in this moment. Obviously, you can't really, you don't, you don't believe it until it actually happens. But that's a great motivator for you guys throughout the season to get to this point. Uh, I just got to talk about, you know, from where you guys were last year. Lots of injuries plagued you guys. You guys were far down in the Heritage Conference, not even in the uh, tournament or the playoff uh, tree. That is, this year you come out, win the District Six title. Uh, it's got to feel good being from the or starting from the bottom, literally as Drake said, and now being here. Yeah, it, it motivated us so, through the off season and even during season. We knew we we had the potential, and we just came out and played. Another week gone, and now you guys are going to still compete. Your season lives on. Uh, right now, I believe Canton is the opponent for next week. But uh, next week, uh, how important is it to have that 0-0 zero, zero mindset, your zero win, zero loss mindset? Um, it, uh, <laughs> Let me rephrase that because I did stumble over that a little bit. The mindset next week has to be a winless and lossless record, keep you guys motivated. Uh, that's got to be a key factor for next week. Yeah, we got coming in the game motivated. We have nothing to lose, really. Last year we did not, like, we weren't even talked about, but this year it's all motivation. Motivation, the naysayers, and you guys proving them wrong. Congratulations, best of luck the rest of the way, and go enjoy this championship. Thank you.
Guys, thank you so much. Enjoy your championship win, and we'll talk to you next time. You. Owen Booker, Peyton Myers, Sh Dawson Schutte, and Ty Dom for the heroes for tonight. I'm going to see if I can flag down Coach Schutte real quick. Um, I'm going to send it back to you guys momentarily until I get him. All right, in our first Commonwealth Bank Colt reaction postgame show, we'll continue 12-6. Colts win the title over the Penns Manor Comets. Coming back with Coach Sam Schutte after this on the Cat Country Renda Media Football Network. Hello, this is John Lefthal, owner and director of the John A. Lefthal Funeral Home, wishing our Penns Manor Comets much success in the upcoming playoffs. It's always an awesome feeling to achieve success, be it in business or sports. You as players have made our community proud. To be a winner, it takes much dedication, time, and preparation. Give it 100% years from now, you will look back with fond memories of what you have accomplished. Go get them, Comets. We at the Leftall Funeral Home are behind you 100%. For over 50 years, Diamond Drug Store and Diamond Medical Supply have helped the people of Indiana to live a most wonderful life. From the advice and expertise of our trusted pharmacists and respiratory therapists to the friendly and personal service of our store staff, we've worked hard to make our community healthier and happier. As Indiana kicks off the holiday season, we can't help but feel grateful to serve this very special community and continue to call it home. From all of us at Diamond, we'd like to wish you a very happy and most importantly, a very healthy holiday season. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. For the best place to dine in the area, Luigi's Ristorante is an excellent choice before or after any game this season or for lunch or dinner throughout the week. Every Wednesday starting at 4 p.m., try two spaghetti dinners, both with meatball salad and bread, only $12.99 dine-in or $14.99 takeout. For excellent Italian food and wonderful service, come to Luigi's Ristorante in Clymer. Voted gold, best all-around restaurant, and best fine dining restaurant in Indiana County. Commonwealth Bank. We can call it Colt Reaction. Post game show continues a 12 6 Northern Cambria victory. Back to back scoring drives in the final 10 minutes of the game. Two touchdown passes, one covering 18 yards, a second on a third and goal covering three yards from Booker to Ty Dum. The difference in the game. And we have the winning head coach, Sam Schutte, in his sixth season. He was the junior high coach here in their only appearance, Jake, in 2003. And they lost. All these years later, here he is as a championship head coach. Down to you with Sam. Mark, thanks so much. Coach, uh, i got to start off with this because there's a lot I want to ask, but i just got to get your initial reaction. You're District 6, Class A champions. It's been a long road, but you're finally here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a pinch-me moment. I, I, again, I, I'm still not comprehending it. I'm, I don't want to leave this facility. Um, it's just amazing experience, um, amazing game, I think, for everyone to watch. And, boy, I tell you what, I'm so proud of our fan base. I mean, it was a, it's such a great crowd behind us and our kids were so fired up and it's a once in a lifetime experience that we will as a team never forget. I think we as a community, as a Northern Cambria community will never forget this night. Absolutely and I agree. Northern Cambria a very tight knit community just being somebody who grew up around there but you have it a lot closer because you're an alumnus of Northern Cambria High School back in 1998. Ironically the year I was born so a great year all around but <laughs> that's beside the point. Uh, you went from player to junior high coach to varsity coach and we were talking off the air this is a very special moment for you as a person absolutely i mean you dream of this moment as, as a little kid and then as a player and 
it never happened for me. But again, never in my wildest dreams that I would imagine myself, I mean, actually in my wildest dreams, imagining myself as a coach, playing in this game and winning. And it, 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 again, it is absolutely surreal. I, I don't feel like it's reality yet. It hasn't sunk in that we were able to do this against a very tough Penns Manor team. Were there any key differences from being a player that's trying to get to the turf to a coach that's finally eclipsed the big time? I don't know, maybe just relating to the guys because you know what, you know, like, because Northern Cambria is just, I always, I always tell our guys, we're like Rocky IV. You know, when, when we go play the Russian and we're, we don't have the best facilities, but we don't need them, you know, because we're a blue collar town and, and, and that's just got to be our attitude. And I, I think our kids have embraced it and, and, and they, they love it. You know, they love it. You know, we didn't bring a coach bus here. We brought a school bus here because that's, that's what we've done all season. That's, that's what we want to do. Well, we got to talk about the game a little bit. Nothing, nothing at halftime. Nothing, nothing after three. Pence Manor scores quickly, six nothing. Then you guys come back with back to back touchdown passes. Uh, Owen Booker to tie dumb. And, you know, you guys quickly change the momentum in this entire game. And I think that just shows how much the leadership on the team matters and how resilient you guys actually are. If these guys wanted a halftime, you know, you could just tell. They wanted it. They were given everything they had, and I knew they were going to give everything they had. And that's all you can ask out of a team. Win or lose, give everything you have. When you walk off this field, win or lose, you can walk off this field with your head held high. Our guys were able to do both. They were able to give everything they had and actually walk off with a win and a and a nice medal. <laughs> we talked to Dawson in the, in the post game as well, and one of the things that I mentioned to him was how quickly that the defensive line really penetrated that offensive line for Penn's Banner. That's one that's of the strongest in the Heritage Conference, and maybe even District 6. You guys got through them with ease. Uh, was that something that was on your radar, radar training up to this game, or was that, do you think that it was just intensity and adrenaline that fueled that? I, I honestly think we're just peaking at the right time. I think our guys have, with a new, new defensive coordinator, I think you know it took a little bit of time for them to gel and come together and just really understand the concept concepts and the things that we're trying to do defensively. So, no, I don't think it was anything that we've done anything differently. I think it's just our guys being very comfortable in the system they're playing in. Let's jump back to the historical context real quick because I would be remiss if I didn't mention you guys just won your first district championship in school history. Uh, it's unbelievable, you know, and you talk about your, your stance as a player to a coach and, you know, there's always that side, but just notching the first one in school history, that adds a little extra spice to it. It's it, Again, it's, it's, an, it's a dream. It's a dream right now that I'm sure I'm going to wake up from eventually, but I don't want to, and that's all I'm going to say about it. And I was talking with Ty Dum in the post game, uh, one of the stars of the game, and one of the things that he brought up was, you know, all the naysayers. That was a big motivator throughout the entirety of the season. I remember us even talking about that. People, they, you know, they don't give you the benefit of the doubt, but you guys prove them wrong week in and week out, and here you are. You know, just talk about how that, how big of a motivator, you know, being an underdog really has been throughout the season. It's been an absolute motivator because, you know, I, I've been talking to these kids. No one has given these guys credit since they were in Pop Warner football. Everyone said, oh, good group of athletes. They're never going to win. They're, they don't they're not going to play together as a team and um, they're playing together as a team and they're winning and, and the potential was always there I think we all we as coaches knew it them as players knew it and they're actually playing together a selfless one unified team and it, it is so fun to watch well, next week you guys step out of your comfort zone and start in the state tournament, and you got to play some opponents you really haven't seen before. I believe Canton is the opponent next weekend. Uh, well, because Duffy Dockerty Stadium is a grass field, you guys will be playing at a different site. So really, you guys, ha you guys have. Uh or you have two battles to face, playing on enemy turf against another enemy. How difficult of a challenge is that? Well, um, we practiced all week at Central Cambria Field, and that's where we're going to play next week. So, you know, we're, we're up at Central Cambria this week in the blizzard um, on ice and snow in, you know, 20, 18-degree weather. And I said, well, guys, what do you think about this being our new home field? For a week or two, and, and they, they didn't quite get it, and now I think they're going to get it. Absolutely. Well, Coach, Congratulations on the district championship. Congrats on being, you know, on bringing home the first district championship in Northern Cambria history. And congrats on making that boyhood dream come true. Thank you very much. Coach Sam Schutte, he's going to go enjoy this uh, win against uh, Penn's Manor 12 to 6. His Colts beat him and claim the district 6 class 8 championship. Mark and Paul, back to you in the booth. Jake, that's outstanding work down on the field. Thank you very much. Colt reaction, an exciting night for Northern Cambria. Players still soaking up the moment on the far sideline as we look across the field. We're going to come back to Mansion Park for a final time, give you the stats, and say good night. A 12-6 Penns Manor loss at the hands of the Northern Cambria Colts. Penns Manor season ends at 11-2. Penns or the Northern Cambria Colts are now 10-3, and, and they will play the Canton Warriors. First Commonwealth Bank postgame show continues from Altoona after this on the Cat Country Renda Media Football Network. We are West Central Equipment. 
Pennsylvania's largest family-owned John Deere dealer. From farming equipment to riding lawnmowers to our new addition of compact construction equipment, we pride ourselves on working with those who work with the land. And the Slazak family has been serving Western PA through four generations since 1938. We have locations in Butler, New Alexandria, Somerset, Evansburg, and Martinsburg. Visit us online at westcentraleq.com. Hey guys, if you're in need of a trim or a new look and don't have the time to make an appointment, stop into Mariah's Barbershop in Spangler. Mariah gets you in and out quickly and offers affordable options like $12 regular haircuts or $15 bald fades. Straight razor shaves also available. And if you're looking for that perfect stocking stuffer for the holiday season, Mariah has gift certificates available in store. ...to someone you care about. That's Mariah's Barbershop, 710 19th Street in Spangler, walk-ins and cash only. Way to go, Comets. This is Jerry Roof from McCabe Roof Funeral Home in Clymer wishing the Penns Manor Comets the very best of luck against the Northern Cambria Colts in the District 6 Championship. You have worked hard all season, which have brought you to this exciting game. To both teams, congratulations on your amazing season. You are a true example of what hard work and dedication can produce. Best of luck, Comets, from your friends at McCabe Roof Funeral Home in Clymer. Game plans, how important they are in the world of sports. Coming up with the right strategy to ensure success. Who's on your team to help you reach your goals in life and protect your assets? John Nelson of Nelson Insurance can develop the right insurance game plan for you. Nelson Insurance is an independent agent representing Erie Insurance and other fine companies. Call Nelson Insurance for a review of your financial game plan. Nelson Insurance, Franklin Street Climber, 724-254-9276. The Climber Slovak Club is a proud supporter of Penn's Manor Athletics and wishes the Comets the best of luck in the playoffs. The Slovak Club opens seven days a week with daily specials, including Tuesday Pasta Night, Taco Wednesdays, Thursday is their famous wing night, and Friday is Peel and Eat Shrimp. Reminder, November 23rd, All You Can Eat Taco Bar, and December 10th is the Members' Christmas Party. Bar Bingo every Sunday starting at 6, 100% payout. The club is always accepting new members and is now in a membership special, so just stop on by and join the best club in the area. Luxembourg's Jewelers, a proud supporter of all the area athletes, would like to wish the best of luck to all the Heritage Conference schools and, of course, the Indiana Little Indians this season. With two convenient locations, Luxembourg's Jewelers is the winning choice for gifts of any occasion. Show your school pride with gifts ranging from beautifully logoed coffee mugs, keychains, money clips, water bottles, and more. From the Indiana Mall to downtown Indiana, Kip, Jeff, and the Luxembourg's team wishes everyone an MVP season. Luxembourg's Jewelers is Indiana's Jeweler. The team at Sheets and Climber would like to wish all the athletes the best of luck in tonight's matchup. If you're watching and listening and you're hungry or thirsty, Sheets and Climber is the place to go. Before, during, after the game, or anytime. MTO sandwiches, hot dogs, crispy chicken, fresh salads, or cool down with a smoothie. Candy, gummies, fried pickles, mac and cheese bites, and jalapeno poppers. Don't forget to bring your Sheets rewards card and take advantage of great Sheets offers. Sheets and Climber, a proud partner of the Penn's Manor Comet. We welcome you back to our first Commonwealth Bank post-game show in the booth with Jake Slobotnik and Paul Tatarko. A hard-fought 12-6 victory over the uh, Penns Manor Comets for Northern Cambria. Hats off, Paul, to Sam Schutte and the Colts. Um, well done. They performed well. Some mistakes in the first half, but uh, things settled down in the second half, and they slugged it out. All of the scoring coming in that fourth quarter. They made big plays when they had to. That's what it boils down to. <coughs> Excuse me. Two big touchdown passes. Uh, Penns Manor, as you just pointed out, um, outgained them 246 to I think 206 or something along 209. Uh, they ran 67 plays. Northern Cambria ran 30. But big plays is what won that football game. Jake Slobotnik, you toughed it out in the cold weather down there. I know you're bundled up and uh, you're thawing out as you come upstairs. But your reaction to this Northern Cambria victory, I'm going to have to you up here uh, as we work on the fly here. There you go, Jake. 
Well, being down on the field, I got to say one thing. I am I'm just loving the way Northern Cambria has been playing the past couple of weeks. Uh, not just last week with a 41 nothing unexpected shutout of uh, Cambria Heights, but this week coming out and upending the Heritage Conference champion, the Penns Manor Comets. When really a lot of people probably came into this one having their money on the Penns Manor Comets, metaphoric money, no allowed, no betting allowed in high school football. <laughs> um, but you know, really they got something special with Owen Booker, his uh, receiving core. Dumb, Myers, Delonsky even, like they, they are just a combined unit. And I think, you know, I, one thing I heard w and uh, Coach Judy say was they peaked at the right time, and I agree completely. I mean, th this is what you play for all season long. Yeah, a, a conference championship is nice, but coming out and winning the district title, that says something a little bit special. I'm really intrigued with how well this carries on through future seasons, how much of a motivator it is for them. So just uh, all around. Nor bright future ahead for Northern Cambria. Give you the stats in this football game. First for Penn's Manor, Max Hill, 28 rushes for 110 yards in the game as he closes out his brilliant career. He entered tonight's action with 1,550, 1,522 yards rushing, so Max finishes with 1632 his senior season. Marshall, Justin Marshall contributed 41 yards on seven attempts, 46 yards for Ashton Corvina on 15 rushes. Mark Bagley, the fullback, three carries, make it four carries for 11 yards. It all totaled 20 or 54 rushing attempts for 208 yards for Penn's Manor. Max Hill was three of 13 with two interceptions for 38 yards passing 246 yards on 67 offensive plays for the Penns Manor Comets. For Northern Cambria, bulk of their damage done in the second half. They ran only 14 plays in the first half for 86 yards. They had um, 123 yards of offense in the second half, and they got 107 of them when it mattered most on those two touchdown drives. Not a lot of rushing yardage, 17 rushes, 61 yards for the Colts. Leading ball carrier was Colton Peronish, five carries for 31 yards. Owen Booker, 20 yards on four carries, but one of them, a big run of 18 yards that carried the football to the one yard line, setting up that go ahead touchdown score. Through the air, Booker, very efficient as he's been all season long. He entered the game with 2,032 yards passing. You can add 148 to those totals. He was 10 of 13 for 148 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. They ran just 30 offensive plays, Paul, compared to the Comets' 67, but they made them count 30 plays for 209 yards of offense and they did what they had to do. They survived. They made it a four-quarter game and they put the throttle down when they had an opportunity. I have to echo uh, Jake's sentiments there in regards to they're peaking at the right time. This team is peaking right now. Let's hope for, uh, for their sake, for our sake, they carry it off, cover it over to next week. I'd love to see them go on a run. They haven't been in a state title game and I think I mentioned this in the pregame since 1965, and that was in basketball, class, class B state champions. They're going to play a very good Canton Warrior team. They won the District 4 title like they did a year ago. They beat Muncie, uh, Muncie Indians. They came to Homer Center last year, and Cantons are going to be a formidable opponent. The rest is really icing on the cake, Jake Slobotnik. You win a District 6 championship. You're in the quarterfinals right now. You're one of eight teams left in the state, and... You're going to, you uncovered it. I guess they'll play the game at Central Cambria High School next weekend. We were hoping darn for Penn's Manor because we're familiar with the technology out there, but they'll go up uh, into Red Devil territory and um, they'll host Canton. Canton's going to have to make a 185 mile drive to Evansburg. And that's something good for Northern Cambria. They stay a little bit local and uh, there's a little bit of history with Central Cambria too. Aside from me being an alumni over at Central Cambria, Sam Schutte used to teach over at Central that's Cambria right. too. So he returns to his own stomping grounds. He returns to the turf and really just enjoying the ride as much as he can. Like you said, one of eight teams. You know, just let it, let it ride out. Enjoy it while you can. Don't get too stressed out over it. And the weather 
uh, is going to warm up, we're told, next week. And it's always a great thing when you're playing high school football on Thanksgiving weekend because not many can say that. I do have to correct myself. Northern won a couple state titles, at least two, maybe three in girls volleyball. Okay. I apologize yep. for that. You're right. <laughs> All right. We want to thank our entire broadcast crew. It takes a monumental effort to put this on. Uh, Renda Digital TV and the radio broadcast. We want to thank Joe Weister. You did the, he's behind the camera, but he did the holiday parade last night in Indiana, made the trip with me up here to El Tuna, working for the first time with IUP sophomore, that famous Charleroi grad, um, Peyton Trollinger. Am I saying that name right? Trollinger. Trollinger. So, Peyton, thank you very much. Our producer across the way through the window, video producer. John Smathers, our studio engineer back at 9th in Philly. Lucas Lane working the game tonight. Great job, Lucas. Uh, it uh, has been a great night. A lot of viewers, a lot of listeners on Cat Country 106.3, and we'll follow the Colts and see how they do next weekend when they go against the Canton Warriors, guys, all right? So speaking for Jake Slobotnik and Paul Tatarko and our entire Renda sports family, Mark Burdick reminding you that the Northern Cambria Colts, held to the Colts tonight. They win their first ever District 6 championship. They defeat and end the Penns Manor Comets season by a final score of 12 to 6. Until we talk to you next weekend from Central Cambria for Northern Cambria and Canton State Playoff Football, Mark Burdick bidding you a very pleasant good evening from Chile Mansion Park Stadium in Altoona. Good night, everybody. Good luck, Colts, from Lynn Sinoco of Northern Cambria, servicing your auto mechanical needs with expert care. Lynn Sinoco has a long list of satisfied customers. Also in Northern Cambria, Medvan Transport, providing non-emergency transports for wheelchair and station car transports for all your medical transport needs. Medvan Transport is now hiring drivers and EMTs. Robindale Energy Services is a proud supporter of high school athletics and our hometown community. To do its part for the local rural areas, Robindale Energy has been cleaning up refuse coal piles that dot the western Pennsylvania landscape. These waste piles, remnants from past decades of mining in the region, are removed and used to create affordable energy for America. Robindale Energy has helped to clean up hundreds of miles of streams and channels. In the area where the land has been restored for a while, streams have become alive again and able to support plant and fish life. For employment opportunities, contact Robindale Energy at 814-446-6700, extension 120. Every moment. We are West Central Equipment, Pennsylvania's largest family owned John Deere dealer. From farming equipment to riding lawnmowers to our new addition of compact construction equipment, we pride ourselves on working with those who work with the land. And the Slazak family has been serving Western PA through four generations since 1938. We have locations in Butler, New Alexandria, Somerset, Evansburg, and Martinsburg. Visit us online at westcentraleq.com. The Rose of Sharon Floral Shop in Clymer is a proud supporter of Penn's Manor High School. Located in the heart of Clymer, they've been providing beautifully designed floral arrangements specializing in birthdays, anniversaries, get well, funerals, weddings, homecomings, and proms for over 30 years. The Rose of Sharon Floral Shop is the trusted name for all your floral needs. Call 724-254-4234 or visit our website at roseofsharonclimber.net. Go Comets! At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Business happens here, and here, and 
here. At First Commonwealth, we believe that to be the best bank for the businesses that create strong communities, we need to understand the way they work, see their companies firsthand, meet them face to face, and build a relationship so we can help them build their business. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. Right now at Luther Ford, order your new Ford and lock in 2.9% APR financing for 60 months, no matter when your new vehicle comes in. That's right, order your new vehicle now, and your interest rate is locked in even if rates go up. Just stop in today and drive away in your new vehicle from Luther Ford. Luther Ford, two great locations, Homer City and Evansburg. Click on LutherFord.com. 